of parts, right? Yes, yeah, right. It's, and everything yeah. that's a summation of parts, it simply yeah. is the summation of parts, right? So the fact that the parts exist are an explanation as to why the whole exists. You but, got what I mean? But that isn't that ultimately that's what I'm saying. So maybe it's a lack of understanding on my part, but isn't pretty much the, saying, the that, whole... that, sorry, sorry, hold on, hold on. But that, that wouldn't, for instance, that wouldn't that wouldn't permit emergent properties, for instance, right? Like I'm just thinking of a real quick um... by emergent properties. No, I'm saying this. Look, it, it's really about the simple. A whole depends on its parts that exist. It doesn't exist without its parts, right? But I'm saying, but just follow, follow my line for a second, because I, I I don't necessarily want to disagree with you for the sake of it, but but that would that not allow that would that wouldn't accommodate an emergent property, would it? Because then you would say, what do you mean by emergent this, property? Like an emergent property, like something that is greater than the sum of its parts. Like your Some cells okay. make up your cells make up your brain, and your brain has consciousness. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm saying I don't really understand this inference, yeah, yeah, sure. though. Right? Can I can I just figure out what's being said first, though? Because like. Are you just okay, trying yeah, to I'm, say? I'm essentially saying this. Are you um, are you just trying to say that if if something exists, it's necessarily part of so, uh, it's necessarily a myriological part of something else? No, I'm. Uh, let, let me actually rephrase it. Maybe put it a little simpler. It's my bad. So, essentially, this a whole is dependent upon its parts to exist. That's all I said, pretty much. Meaning, and every brute fact is or brute existence is independent. It has no cause. Call it right doesn't need another to exist. Therefore, a whole is not a brute fact. Wait, I don't understand what you're what you're talking no, about. Like when you say that's, that's, that's not a sorry. Hold on a sec, hold on a sec. Yeah, it's not though, it, just look, you could, to someone claiming that the universe is the necessary existence. So that's what, what he did. Yeah, but hey, it, look, it doesn't matter. But the point is is that it's not it, it's not that parts cause holes or something like that, right? it's a it's a constitution so if all of the if all of the parts came into existence with some sort of muriological relation without having been been caused it doesn't follow Would that there's say, no hole there or let, it doesn't let me, let me follow this in, if, if if you don't mind let me slip this in um would you say that the whole can exist without its parts i mean muriological realism is nonsense but if I grant muriological realism for the sake of argument, the answer is no. Okay. Oh, oh, wait. Okay. So even if we grant that like holes exist, right? Then you're saying even then, right? The parts have no explanatory power as to why there's a hole. I don't know what you mean. They're, the hole is constituted by parts. Yeah, that's the point, right? So like, it's um, not caught, but it's hey, not. The you? point is that it's not causal. Are you trying to propagate some sort of uh, priority monism? Or, like, uh, I don't really understand. Uh, I, no, I I'm understand. not saying anything. I just see it as a simple. If you have a hole, the... right? Then part of the reason it exists is that the part exists. <laughs> it's that simple. Uh, I'm right, sure. Yeah. The, when you say the reason it exists, if you're just talking about its constituents, you're just saying something trivial. That's the point. I'm not saying something. But look, but that doesn't address the point that um, all of the constituents parts could have come into existence in some relation without a cause. You know, I'm not talking you, about the parts. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not. My claim isn't uh, isn't there as is an independent existence. That's not. It's not what I'm saying. My claim is this: that everything that is a whole, by definition, needs parts to exist, right? And the reason it exists is due to parts. Part at least part of the reason it exists is due to parts, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you're just saying something trivial, right? Yeah, I'm not saying. But what? Wait, 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 wait. Before, before. But what is that? Wait, hold on, I'm trying to figure out how wait, wait, does this know, relate know, back to the universe or whatever, brother, though. Brother, brother, let me just explain why it was quote unquote trivial, right? Someone didn't agree with that, right? So I'm just gonna what? be like, hey, don't you see this trivial fact about it? But it seems like you're you're saying like I shouldn't have said it because it's trivial. You know what I mean? How does it relate <laughs> to the saying? claim about the no? How does it relate to the claim about the universe? What claim about the universe? Someone said the universe was a brute fact, and you said that couldn't be the case. Yeah, because what is the universe as a whole? Hey, Murphy, can you check your back channel, please, right now? Thank you. As, like, what is the when someone says universe, you? I'm assuming when someone says universe, call it a bad assumption. So, so yeah, that I, they I, refer to I, all I, of. Wait, wait, please, brother, brother, means. please, please. So, uh, but well, no, I was just responding to what Hades said. I don't know what that means. Okay. Sorry, and that pause as well, just for the sake okay. of...
the worst. Okay. Yeah, carry on. Bro. Okay. okay, yeah, my bad. Okay, so when someone says universe, I'm assuming, call it a bad assumption, that they're referring to the whole of space, matter, time, energy, etc. That's that's when I hear universe, that's what I think automatically. Ooh. So based off that assumption I made, right? Then I'm like, okay, because it's a whole, all holes, right, are explained by parts. I don't know what you mean. Like it's it's like a weird when you if you just say constituted, fine. People can say like people are gonna agree with you that it's constituted. The same way, um, like it, it's a weird, uh, just colloquial to say something like line segment. Line segments explain triangles, yeah. right? Okay, no one I, would say line segment. Sorry, stop interrupting me. No one would say line segments explain triangles. People would say line segments or triangles are constituted by line segments, right? Yeah, but with something being constituted, right? That makes it yeah. dependent on it to be true. Right, so for example, would you say, I, I want to know if you agree on this, would you say a brute existence needs another thing to exist? I don't even know what that means. What does it mean to say a brute it's existence because, needs it's another? It's because, Dave, when, when you say something's a brute fact, that means it has no other explanation other than that's it, right? It doesn't mean but it doesn't, it doesn't mean it's not constituted by anything. No, no, no the, thing, the thing that it's constituted by is the thing that it depends on for its existence, so it can't be a brute fact no more. Yeah, how could, how could a whole exist without its how? parts? Yeah, how how can you say that the totality is a brute fact when the totality only exists because of another existence? Then that means it's not a brute fact no more. It, Look, it doesn't if, make any sense. If you're just saying, when you say, I'm not, I didn't, con I didn't say anything you fucking said I said, so how the fuck could I be relax, contradicting Dave, myself? Calm down, Dave, calm down. No, I'm not going to fucking calm down with this Dave, dishonest down. punk bitch. Whoa, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to fucking be oh, calm when you say I'm contradicting um, myself bro, when I didn't fucking, bro, I didn't fucking bro, say bro, anything. Bro, I didn't say. I, I apologize. Timothy, Timothy, I'm driving. I apologize. Timothy, I apologize, bro, damn. My bad. I apologize. I'm sorry. I thought you were the one that made the claim that something can be constituted by something and also be a brute fact. That's a contradiction. Yeah, that's, that's what we're saying. Sorry, my bad. I'm, look, I, I look, again, again, I'm tr my, the point is that if you're saying that if you want to call it a whole or not a brute fact or whatever, because it has the only things that can exist as brute facts or whatever are simples on your view. And this is, again, we're assuming mere logical realism, which is a nonsense view anyway. But if you're saying... That uh, the the only that uh, one can simply paraphrase the brute fact thing uh, to say that the universe, Actually, all of the simples. Sorry, stop interrupting me. All the simples that compose the 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 universe don't have an explanation for their existence. Yeah, and therefore, okay. Let me re yes, re yes. refactor a claim. Right, I never said the universe, as in every single thing inside it, right, or there's no individual particle or whatever. That yes. isn't independent. No, I'm, I'm not making that claim. The only claim I made was that if you have a whole, right, then a whole isn't a brute fact. Why? Because it needs parts to exist. And a brute fact means it can exist without anything else, right? That's what I'm saying. It's, I don't even think you're disagreeing. It seems like you're just, you know. Yeah, it's the same, it's the same thing. <laughs> you're going off. Like you're adding something in there. You're adding stuff to do with like individual pieces of the yeah, universe. That's not and, what we're talking about, though. And, like, and, and you're getting way, pissed when, at us for that. Yeah. Like, come on. And, and by the way, you're, 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 sorry if I don't want to strum on you, but you're almost making it seem like that we are kind of making our own version of brute fact. Like it's just something that cannot be explained, and that's modern philosophy. It's just something that cannot be explained. But by you acknowledging the existence of a whole, you're also acknowledging the existence of its constituaries, right? The parts. So it, that means it can be explained. Well, I didn't acknowledge the existence of anything. I granted it for the sake of argument. Yeah, I know. We're, right, we're working right. off that grant. You know what I mean? We're building yes, off it, that. Yeah, but by granting it, okay, it also grants the existence of its parts, which means it's explained by the parts. Think about it. If matter, if nothing existed, would the universe exist? Obviously not. Yeah, so it depends on its parts. It, well, you just that. said, yeah, obviously, on. it's a closed question when you say, if nothing existed, would the universe exist, right? If yes, exactly. That that's my point. You can't say that the whole is a brute fact when the whole only exists because of its parts. Again, you can if you paraphrase it the way I explained to you paraphrase it. But how you put it was you essentially appeal to individual members being able to exist exactly. independently, right? Way but that's not what we're talking about. Like it's yeah, like the way you phrase it, that like that's not even what we're talking about. What we're talking about is a whole, right? We're not talking about the individual pieces and all holes right necessarily depend upon its parts for its existence and a brute fact at least my understanding say i'm wrong <laughs> is that it's like essentially a contingent existence 
right? A contingent existence that isn't explained by another existence. Yeah, However, you can point as to why the whole exists. Why the whole exists, you can point to every individual member, right? Right. I, I don't think you even disagree so, with us, to be honest. I, I don't think you disagree no. with us. I don't think he does, no. I mean, so I'm, now, I'm trying to figure out what the, the, the claim is, just that you're saying that the dependency relation is a, is a relation of constitution, and so if there are constitutional relations, there are no brute facts, is what you're saying? No, not that no, there are I'm no saying, brute uh, facts. We're saying the whole itself no, no, isn't a brute fact because it's... Say... Go ahead, Moshi. Exactly. Essentially, what, what we're saying is this. If you have an existence filled with only contingent or dependent things, then you can't say that the totality of this existence is a brute fact. No, it's the, the totality exists because of the contingent things within it. So it's not a brute fact. So now it, 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 we have to ask ourselves, okay, cool. So now we have an existence filled with the dependent things. If it's not, if a brute fact is not the explanation, then now we have to ask ourselves, is the totality dependent, is conditioned on something within it? Or is it, is it existing because of something external to it? Isn't, um, isn't that reliant somewhat on an assumption, for instance, like everything well, you you for instance everything you and i know um to exist is contingent right contingent and dependent right both of those okay, we'd, okay, we'd okay. agree okay. but that isn't to right but that isn't to say that of there course. is right right for instance or for instance like another oh maybe may, crude, may i just state what you're trying to say okay you're trying to say this so because we have okay you're essentially saying this is our this is our reasoning right we see stuff that are dependent and then we say, okay, the totality of all this stuff must be dependent as well. Is that no, what you no, think? No, for, not, for, instance, for instance, everything, everything, I know that begins, that. everything that begins to exist has a cause, for instance, as a marker, like, right, so, so yeah, we from that, you extrapolate. Relations, yeah. Right. yeah, you extrapolate. Okay, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. But what, so, but so, what, no, what, okay. I would, so this I, is what I, actually I, happened. Hadi, Hadi, well, I would just let argue, let though, quickly. I would just argue, then, in that case, so so assume you're, if we're talking theoretically or hypothetically, we could say, all right, let's say that it's granted the constituent parts um, the properties of the constituent parts are uh, have to be akin to the property of the or equivalent to the properties of the whole. I'll grant you that for a moment, right? But then hey, how you doing? You, oh my god, you look exhausted. Um, <laughs> hey, Haiti, Haiti. Um, but yeah, but then um, in terms of in terms of the assumption that's made, right, or the assumption that your the, um, that your the corollary was founded upon, right, is that is a composition fallacy, fallacy in that. You're oh, saying that okay. because yeah, everything we know, yeah, but hold on, hold on, hold on. So everything we know to be dependent and contingent, it must no, be the case no. that a brute okay. reality cannot exist. Okay. Just hold on, just okay. but hold on, Had but it. that means just one thing that you're not unaware of, right? One thing that exists that is, let's say, equally brute, could, based on your logic, be a reflection of the whole. So okay. you're, you're basically saying that because I don't know of it to be the case, it must be the no, case. No, no, that. okay. This is essentially what we're... Wait, well, one sec, Hadi, before, before you mention it, can I just say something? Uh, it's Timothy or Timothy. Listen, brother, I just want to say I completely understand where you're coming from, uh, but it's, it's, it's not what we meant. Our type of reasoning is not inductive whatsoever. We're not saying because, we, because of what we see, therefore, this is probably what it is. It's purely deductive in nature. So it's not, it's, we're, we're not using the composition fallacy. Uh, not at all. It's just, yeah, let me kind of explain deductive. our reasoning. Yeah, okay. So our reasoning was never... Um, so the parts of the whole are dependent. Oh, therefore the whole must be dependent. No, no, we're saying this. We're saying, okay, let's look at what, a, what it means to be a whole. What it means to be a whole is to have constituent parts, right? To have parts, right? To be a whole of internal parts, right? So we say, okay, because it has internal parts and in order for it to exist, it needs internal parts to exist then the whole existence is necessarily right dependent upon the parts in order to exist right we're not saying that just because the parts are dependent the whole is no no no, no nothing like that what we're saying is that because you have a whole that has parts right then it can't be the whole if the parts didn't essentially constitute it and actualize what it means to be that whole you know what exactly. I mean? no no i, I, no, means, no, I fully, means can't, can't bro, I fully understood your point but even that like if that's a particular framing of each of our positions, for instance, your argument goes something like God's existence is separate to the universe's existence, right? Therefore, that resolves, that ties a bow on the problem as far as you're concerned. But why can't we make the exact same claim? Right? Why can't we say universal existence? Probably, why can't we say universal existence is separate to the existence, the spatio-temporal existence that I occupy? Well, what do you mean no by God, a universal existence? 
equally like whatever you mean by God's existence, so I can just say like the t it's so a brand of existence that's separate. Somehow. Yeah, but like, Timothy, like, here's, here's the reason. Here's the reason why you can't do that. Before you evaluate what the position is about God's existence, the, the position that you're holding that the universe is somehow the necessary thing or a brute thing or an independent thing, that's what we're showing is not uh, reality. So you can't say that. Well, I accept that it's that it's dependent. But I'm still going to hold that it's a special type of dependent and independent. dependent. Yeah. And, and we're not even saying that. Right? And we're not even saying that God explains it away. No, no, nothing like that. All we're saying right now for this, the purpose of this discussion is essentially just a whole explains my parts. That's it. Honestly. And I, I'm not sure if you disagree with that. So like if maybe you can. No, like, see, I, like, could you essentially explain? Yeah, yeah. So could you essentially explain like where your disagreement to that is or before we move on to another topic, right? Where your disagreement to that is, or if you don't even disagree and you kind of agree with us. Yeah, no, I mean, superficially, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. Like, as far as I'm concerned, anything I build, yeah, is, is um, but, sorry, actually, let me, let me, but make a point though, but, but something was said about emergent properties, so the whole, or something becoming greater than the sum of its parts, right? No, we now, never I, really made that comment. And, Say again? Sorry. Yeah, we never really. Uh, that, that was never really in our reasoning. No, I didn't say you made that. I didn't say you. Even, no, I didn't say you oh, made that. Okay. Even there, my bad, my bad. Like, independence no, no, I'm saying, is I'm not going to somehow I'm saying, can emerge. I rule that out as in, I'm saying, can I rule that out as impossible? Uh, on that, I, I probably would be agnostic, right? Um, um but here, I, I say, I, if we have bricks, yeah, if we have agree, small bricks, right? Yes, yeah, so I'd say if we have small bricks, that doesn't mean that a wall is small just because it's made up of small bricks. No, no, that's not what we're saying. But we are saying, right, and I'm not even sure who made that claim today, by the way, but like, let's say some, some random dude named John, right, John Lee, what's up, said that claim, right, then, okay, maybe you could attack that, but like, I just want to know if like that specific reasoning, right, that a whole needs parts to exist, right, simple, right, that specific reasoning, do you find any contention with that? Yes, sir. Oh, so sorry. You talk to me. I'm trying to. I'm trying to invite <laughs> yeah. someone to the stage. Not, not, I, no, it's okay. I should no, be I was left talking to John Lee. Oh, you talking to John Lee? Right, no, no, I'm joking. Joking. Timothy, <laughs> Timothy, did you just discover the back channel? So you have like a million messages back there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah every, everyone's going like, "Yo, catch him on this. Catch him on this. He made this slip up." Yo. <laughs> I, 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 I worked him. out the back channels a moment ago, and now I'm now because I'm not used to being a mother and like. <laughs> I'm, I'm working out how to invite people onto the stage. Sorry. But yeah, no, like I said, superficially, I don't, I don't have an issue with... Um, so and the reason I say superficially, you? the reason I say superficially, sorry, because it's not a cop-out, is because I haven't investigated it in terms of, like, something I've, like, fundamentally... Um, like, sorry, an argument. I don't disagree with you. That's put it like that. Is that fair to say? Like, that makes sense so, to me. That, as far as I'm concerned, it makes sense to me. Okay, so, yeah. Timothy, is, is, is where you're at that there's a hole that needs the pieces to exist and there's pieces that depends on there being that type of set and that's kind of existence that there's just a symbiotic relationship do you guys ever make pieces? arguments for the existence of god yes all the time yeah all the time brother. in our room Join our room brother right, actually so you've been in our room Sean, what do you mean for the existence of god i'm wait, saying we're, we're, we're getting there we're, we're getting wait, there. Wait, oh, even oh, if we oh, don't oh, wait, you're so, getting there let me you're just, getting there let me just I'm pause for a second. When wait, wait, wait. Get there. wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. wait, wait. Brother, brother, brother. I could do this earlier, Sean. It doesn't work. Sean, I mean, Sean, 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 Sean. Wait, wait, wait. Let so, me hold Sean. So, so what's the argument? I'm just wondering if you can give me the argument for why any of this has anything to do with the existence of God. Like, how do you even define God? Okay, Sean, let me hold you. Sean, Sean, Sean. Have you never heard us? Let's start there. Let's start there, right? Define God and then give me an argument for God's existence. Let's start there. Wait, wait, Sean. This is a chat. This is wait, 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 Moshi, please. Okay. So look, Sean, you're saying, are you making the claim that we never provide arguments for God's existence? Yes. Oh my God. The hey, cap. Go on then, Hadi. I mean, okay. E e e brother, either brother. way, uh, guys, can we can we can we keep our cool and just keep this very logical? There's no. Wait, well, where's the argument? Just, just calm yeah. down, Sean. Just calm down. Calm down. I'm totally calm. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just look, if Hadi, do you want to like? I'm not yelling. I'm just talking over like five people. So, so Hadi, this is the thing, right? We're having a calm, respectful dialogue, 
right? Uh huh. And oh, then like, I can he's yeah. Happened. So I've been listening, right? So I just yeah, yeah. Know. And I'm saying this. Okay. I just want to know where the argument is because you talk about like parts and whole and contingent brother, and then, brother. Where brother? is the argument for God? Oh okay. my God. Okay. Sean May. What is God? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, let, let's have a raise of hands. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, brother, wait, wait, wait. brother. Oh my so God. Okay. Like you're, talk, a, talk you're a believer, talk right? Talk and let me know. Right? Talk, talk Sean, let me know. Sean, Sean, calm down, shush, please. Sean. Well, How listen. Do we, I like, should should we start again? Let's start. Let's restart. Start again. Hadi, do you want to give your argument for God? Okay. Before before we do that, right? Oh, before we do that, right? Okay, Sean, Sean, talk, talk, and let me know when I can. Well, here's the thing: is I thought this room was. I thought this room was titled. Uh, is God really go all powerful? Sean, would you like, like to present a, a, a contradiction with <laughs> omnipotence? Do you have an argument? Because that's the title of this room, right? No, I'm not aware. I'm not. I'm not sure if there's a contradiction in omnipotence or not. There probably is, but okay. I haven't really thought about it. Well, when we but have another, there's when there's another, another room later, the when there's another room later, we can engage with that. Wait, no, wait. So you don't? Okay, want to Sean, tell Sean. Me so talk, talk, and let me know when I can talk. We were literally in the middle of a discussion with Timothy and Sean. You just came out, brought a random topic, so I think. Well, it's look, because because, because all you guys do about. is you talk in circles, right? Of course, you do this oh, big, God. long we talk circle, in circles, mm -hmm. circles mm -hmm. okay, Sean, about dependence you say, relations Sean, you say, and you say, you, you say we talk uh, in circles, but uh, we're just following. Nobody the even topic knows what you're talking about. The other no, you're not. We're, we're following the topic. No, you're not. Yes, no, we were. We were literally. We were. No, no, Sean. Before you came in, everybody was agreeing with the topic of the room right oh, everybody okay. was talking about the same right, topic right. you came in and you saying, went oh, hey okay. where's your proof of god oh, where's like, oh, oh you, yeah oh, yeah sean not god exists because okay, the theist exists god doesn't exists mean because... he's not allowed to have a conversation without right. having arguments for god's existence right. especially when so the let's title have of the a real conversation then, right? arguments for god's so existence because these these little oh, arguments you sean, make you've they literally don't go anywhere sean, okay wait, go wait, wait, wait. premise one premise one sean You're said literally and he's gonna retract nothing. this wait, 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 sean is gonna keep oh, talking or he's gonna retract this sean is gonna keep talking or he's gonna retract this sean is gonna keep talking he's gonna retract this please Okay, Francis, may I please okay sean you said all the arguments you made go in circles and get nowhere and That's then the next thing you said was that we never made arguments. Pick one. Pick God, one or retract the statement. No, you, make, you don't make arguments for God, dumbass. Oh, you can my make God. Arguments, circular really, really. arguants okay, about nothing all day long. Right? You, you, can make, you can make an argument that doesn't go anywhere until we're making an posted, argument. Okay, like, guys, I don't dumbass. make arguments Sean, for God. Go <laughs> on my replays, Sean, scroll through, and look at all the things. Moshi, wait, Moshi. Wait, Moshi wants to talk. Wait, wait, Moshi. I think Moshi wants to say something. Wait, what's up, Moshi? What's up, Moshi? Yeah, what's up? Yeah, let's have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's have a conversation. Sean, Sean, Sean tried to do this oh earlier yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, Sean tried. Oh, wait, Rashad, 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 Wait, Rashad, wait, 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 Moshi, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Wait, Moshi, hold on. Rashad wants to talk. Wait, Hadi, Hadi, wait, Moshi, Hadi wants to talk. Wait, Moshi, hold on. Hadi wants to talk. Hadi wants to talk. Hadi, what's the argument? Yeah, it's up to the mods if they want to control that or we can leave. Sean tried to do this earlier. We can't talk. This is, guys, guys, this is like, I'll just end the room if you guys act like this get back to the conversation you were having yeah. or start it or start a new conversation but just this yelling at people is okay. not no one so can we return to our original conversation yeah we, so, we you don't, wait, so you don't want to make an argument no no Sean, we, to, to tell you the truth to be honest we're very scared to make an argument in front of you because you're very I, I, mean, I know you are right yes, exactly. yes we're very yeah. we're very frightened but actually. i don't so well, you because be. we're so frightened sean because we're so frightened sean we want to stick to a different topic and run away from you that's what we want to do okay well then, leave. Thank you. Then Thank you. Away. Okay. But Sean, okay, you're great. the one wanting to talk about something that's out of topic. So either wait your turn. Uh, the existence of God early. is out of topic. This this no, is the atheism the club. Look, look the, the title is is God really look, all powerful? Look at the yeah. Title. Can the you title read? Right. Is about omnipotence. Does anyone have anything to say about that? Exactly, Sean. Jeez. Wait. So we can't talk about can the existence. We can just. So wait. Sean, we have to assume. Sean, wait. So we have to assume leave. the existence of God. Sean. Oh, Sean. Not, can you not yell on omnipotence? You can lower your voice. Talks. So omnipotence why did you present talks an argument? directly. Omnipotence talks directly to Sean, the moral faculties this, of God, this, right? right? Which is going to entail and talk about His existence. So. That's and you're right. Bad. Moshi and Hadi haven't given an argument for anything. Sean, so it's kind of an interesting. Okay, wait, first, first, first. Let's address, Sean, um, first, if I talk right now, will you let me talk? 
What? Talk about no, something that matters. He hasn't, Sean, he hasn't done Sean, that this entire talk day. Talk about so something that is in like Sean, Germany Sean, now. if I if I respond, because you keep asking questions, but when we respond, you answer for us. So if I talk right now, will you? Okay, will, so will God you... exists because. Yes. Okay. Go oh ahead. my God. Okay. God but... exists because. Go ahead. Okay, Sean, will you let me talk? Of course, I'll let you talk. God exists because. Wait. Will you let me talk? Without yeah, you cutting if you, say, if you tell me why God exists, I'll let you talk. Okay, then, brother. Clearly, we were having a discussion about parts being dependent on holes. Do you have any contribution <laughs> to that? Or you just want to keep talking? Okay, yeah. What's the, what, wait, what, is being dependent on parts. what more is there to say about that? Parts Shine. are dependent on holes. Okay, great. Genius. Holes are dependent on parts. People around. disagree. People disagree, oh, Sean. Oh, holes are dependent on parts. People disagree. Refute it. John, you done or something? I'm not gonna yeah, lie to you. Yeah. To guys, I mean, guys, I don't do this guys, early I, I don't as well. Have a conversation with this guy. I, I, guys, I love Timothy because at least Timothy was intellectually honest and not ignorant. Yeah, because you're scared. Yeah, but guys, we're very guys, scared. But the thing is, yeah. like Timothy you. is too nice to you guys. Like, no way. Guys, guys, guys. We think we're scared of you, no, guys. guys. No, that's... Be nice to yes, yes, I'm sure we're all scared of him. Nice. But guys, guys, one yeah. second. Yeah, every everybody everybody can agree. Yeah, at least that like everybody wants to be here, right? Like, everybody wants to have a conversation. It may not all be the same conversation you guys want to have, but you're all, like, sharing each other's time. I don't know what time it is, wherever you guys are. So, like, can we let Jack know, and we're, we're definitely all adults, right? So it should be easy to have a conversation. Yeah, can you let Jack all have and Friction out? Sorry, I didn't hear well, yeah, so I, 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 Detroit. Detroit talked okay, to these guys, and Detroit, did you get an argument from them? No, he's not let up yet. Somebody let somebody invite friction up. Yeah, Detroit let friction up. Because what I was told got... is that they didn't even know what an inference rule is, right? Yes, yes, we don't. And know Moshi anything. and Moshi is so dumb, he doesn't understand the distinction uh, me, that's not, between. That, that's shut not, up while I'm talking, that's asshole. Wait, wait, yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Relax, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Relax. Go, calm down. So it's up to them. Hey, Jack, maybe, 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 Jack, you want to. You, calm you down. guys go make your own room where you insult people and act like fucking assholes. Fuck off. Thank you, thank you, Haiti. I really appreciate that. I actually appreciate it. Yeah, yeah seriously. Yeah, I mean to be, yeah, I, yeah. It's one forty-three. This room was going nice until they showed up. Yeah, until Jack and his team showed up. I don't, I don't, I don't give a shit. This room was nice. Oh, sure. You know, it was actually very peaceful. Just finished a nice coding assignment. You know, I'm ready to talk about God. Have a nice, friendly discussion. Talk about Ma- other things. You know, Masha Allah. But uh, <laughs> listen, it's um. Yeah, it's really late. Um, appreciate your time, guys. Hopefully, yeah, you you'll make it to this room more often. It's kind of been exclusively Christian up until this point. So, yes, yeah. Um, I feel like I feel like. Oh, that, thanks, bro. I really appreciate it. By the way, you're a really nice guy. I feel like I feel like Jack is very upset. He just came in, you know, screaming, so like, shut up, like, mm-hmm. just get talking. I'm I'm giving Sean another shot because he's. I okay. don't know, Sean. Wait, just, wait. Can you just not be so like angry Abrasive, or something? Like- Wait, I'm not angry though. So here's the thing: like these guys call us monkeys and stuff when we go into their rooms, well, and they never entertain think... arguments. They never entertain really? arguments. Who, who, and they never... these guys? I, I, what? I have yeah. I have never called you a monkey. No one called you. Oh a yes, you have. Yes, you have. No, I've, I've never called you a monkey ever. Don't be a liar, Sean. Give me. What are you talking, guys? I, I've. Okay. Hey, have you okay. ever heard me call this guy a monkey in this room? I've, I've never. I've what is it? Not heard. in this. I didn't say you called me a monkey in this room. So I don't know. Yeah, I didn't say he called me a monkey in this room. But look, the guy ran away. The, the guy ran away, right? Hadi left as soon as I mentioned the fact that he calls people monkeys, right? Because he knows that I'll go pull up a replay of them all doing it, right? So these okay, guys aren't nice. Call, never, they're I'm, not. They're not I've charitable. Ah, right? so, so so Sean's so, feelings are yeah. hurt. Wait, no, my so feelings are hurt, right? Feelings, but I just yeah. want to say that this this like whole like charade of like niceties is just not true, right? Like, if I want to just ask them about like giving an argument they're not going to do it okay right? they're going to run sean, away sean you made a claim that i've never given an argument for god's existence so That's we have true. proof now, okay argument? now go on my profile pic my profile sean scroll down <laughs> and then i'll tell you exactly which discussions and many discussions we've had with your whole team right about arguments for god's existence and that was literally the yeah, whole title of the room exactly. and purpose of the room yeah you never you never go down undeniable god. proof of god's What's existence the well, if it's brother, brother, you brother, you're not even letting me go what when is it you should be able to render when you get caught out in a lie sean if it's undeniable you should be able to render you get caught out in a lie sean you just talk over people when you get caught out in a lie you just talk over people when you get caught out in a lie 
You just talk over people. Yeah, exactly. Honey, just just let me render the you. argument. Let I don't know why you're you. wasting everybody's time. Let me show you how time. you're being dishonest. Let me show you how you're being dishonest. You all uh, all right, let's let's let's, let's all all right. You are so let's ignorant. All, just, let's all be nice, brother. Let's all be nice, right? Wait, well, I'm willing. I'm willing to wipe the slate clean. Right, I'm everyone, willing to wipe Sean, the slate Sean. Clean. Quiet, quiet. Everyone, be nice. If I'm sending into the audience. Okay, okay. Do not so talk yeah. over each other. Start, let's okay. start again. Can we start again, please? Or I'll just end yeah, the room. Yeah. Okay, I'll Thank start. You. Okay, so Sean, from from your end, you called him a liar that he never provided proof. Wait, no, we said we're going to be nice. Wait, wait, you said we're going to be nice. Get off the meta, buddy. Just give the argument. Okay. Call us, call us the Meta Kings. You know, we are the Meta Kings. We love Meta. You know, so well, look, meta. Uh, that's I'm happy to do that. No, no, we're not, we're not, we're not doing meta. Meta. Okay, okay. Elias is so here. Can somebody bring Elias? Here's a question I have. Here's a question I have for Sean. Sean, do you accept the Stanford Encyclopedia definition of atheism or do you have your own? <laughs> what? How is that? How, I'm curious as to why that, Sean should answer a question when he's asked for an argument. Yeah, how do you say Brother, an argument I'm curious. Oh, I'm, I'm trying I'm to understand curious. what your position is, Sean. Is the atheism room? We... Why don't you? Why don't you make an no, argument no, no, no. for atheism? This is this is not the Sean room. Okay, we're we're going to talk about omnipotence, and we're going to talk about what this guy started to talk about, which is a necessary being. So we can choose one of those. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, just before we do, uh, Elias texted me, like in the audience. He said, uh, "Tell them to invite me up." He's texting you now. Um, okay. Yes. Um, by the way, no, don't bring, don't bring don't any more of the their thugs up. There's no thugs up, bro. That's, that's, that's one of our top philosophy though. guys. <laughs> that's one of our top philosophy guys. You want an argument from God? You can have. How do you say he has an yeah. argument? But you brother, no, today I have never. So I think it's safe to say he has no. No, you're just brother. Please, 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 please. Okay, wait, Heidi. Honestly, Why like, are you is so this going to be the argument? I, I, I know. I already told you. I'm very scared of you. I'm very scared okay. of you, Sean. You're very intimidating. You know right. what I mean? We, so now, we, Heidi. We, uh, oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. You came in here, you and Moshi, and I got the impression you wanted to talk about necessary existence and necessary we being. Did. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. that is That is something that you don't need to yell and scream and insult each other of about, Of course. Right? But, 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 Heidi, I just want to say, isn't it funny that the common denominator is Sean? Like, I feel like it's kind of circled around him. But I thought we were not going to do the matter. I thought we were starting over. No, no, I know. but, but Well, I don't you... hear you starting over. No, I understand. But what I'm saying is every time the conversation progresses, it always goes back to the common denominator. I'm saying, let's like just moderate that. Meta. I still think we're on the matter. So can we move on? I know. I, I, okay. I hate meta. But, but it keeps existence. I hate, I hate meta. But in this particular case, it might solve the problem. It keeps happening over and over oh again. Ah, but, you know, but you know, but Sean guys, is guys. being quiet. Sean is, okay, cool, is going to give it a okay. go. Being pleasant. Yeah, you might as well just you. give your argument. The next words that yeah, come out of your mouth yeah. are your yeah, argument. Can we just do the argument? Because, I mean, I don't want to like... Uh, you know, more depressed okay. kids. Okay, okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Right? Okay, so, okay, so, sorry. Okay, so can you bring? So Elias is better at articulating the argument than I am. So he's one of our guys. Can you please bring him up and he'll articulate? He's it a guy with the clown. Listen, what? listen, okay. listen, listen, yeah. listen, 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 because I'm definitely going to sleep in a minute. It's like two a.m. over here. Then it should there be fair. Is. Then hold on. It should be fair then that Sean equally has, you know, I don't know. Requisite support. Oh, sure. If that's the case, who's that guy? Just bring him up. Yeah, sure, sure, that's who's that guy? Just bring him the fuck up. We never said that. But guys, so wait a minute, Timothy. Can I understand? Is Sean asking for that, or you're saying that Sean can't handle it, so he no, needs I'm somebody? Else. No, I'm suggesting it. I'm curating it. If, like, what do you if think, Sean? Do you want to hear the argument? Do you want to engage with it, or do you want to defer to someone else who knows better? He doesn't. He doesn't have to do that. Bring the guy up. Bring the fucking guy up. Just bring him up. What's his name? I'm saying Sean is Sean is the one asking for the argument. Moshi chose to say, "Hey, there's someone else that better articulates the argument." Sean is not asking to be moved down or to bring anybody else up. I think he wants to engage with. Nah, but I'm saying because hold up. I can't find this guy. Okay, he's the Joker guy, and he has he has an Arabic name. He has an Arabic name. Okay, okay. But but the reason I say that is because there. Well, Dave's are, here. But, Sean's here. Dave's here. How many more do you and Darth, need? And, and Darth is there too. Uh, which he's, people, recording. Right? he's recording the entire I conversation. Think Sean no will just, be, be just fine. 
But who's the guy that we're talking about? Yeah. Bring him up. Let's just like bring okay. Ilyasov. Yes. Like this is too this is too childish. Like let's yeah, just yeah. bring him up and we can have a nice respectful conversation. There he is. He's coming up now. Okay, oh, okay. hello. Let's let's Bye bring Ilyas and Sean <laughs> and the mods can mod oh, okay. the rest yeah, of us yeah, can yeah. be quiet. Let's, okay. Okay. Let's, yeah. let's have a one on one Ilyas Sean. That's okay. Up. So okay. I, I can present the argument and Sean can uh, okay. you know refute it and I'll send up uh argumentative form as well so he can okay. answer it great okay mm -hmm. so if and if someone wants uh, else wants it they can have it let me send it to sean as well so send it, yes, send, it to me. send it to me yes send it to me okay uh, it's a complicated argument so uh, uh sean whatever premise you have a question on you can ask me right so okay i'll, I'll start the argument right so for any disjunctive uh, disjunction. Uh, let me explain what a disjunction is. Right. A disjunction. Let us let us assume that we know what a disjunction is. Come on. Keep going. Okay. Okay. Right, but, but you you have a text. You have the argument in text. You can just send it in the yeah. back channel, right? Send it to me in back channel. Okay. Okay. For any disjunction P, if there is an A in P such that A is true only and only if B and C are true, then A is not a necessity condition for P to be true. For any disjunction, the premise two, for any disjunction to be true, the necessity condition for its truth must be met. Three, for all propositions Q that are dependent such that Q is only true if and only if there is an R that is true, then Q is not a necessary condition for P to be true. P is true, for example, and by P I mean uh, the proposition that there is existence is true. The necessary existence for uh, P the necessary existence for P to be true is true, obviously. Uh, uh, it, it follows from uh, uh, premise two and premise four, that there is a necessary condition for P, and P here, by P here, we mean the proposition that there is existence. Any dependent proposition, right, is not a necessary condition for P to be true. Seven, if all ontological propositions are dependent propositions, then the, con the necessary condition for P to be true is not true. And that will lead to contradiction between premise five and premise seven. So it is not possible for all uh, ontological propositions to be dependent proposition. Therefore, there is an ontological proposition that is independent. And by, by that, I mean there's a proposition or there is an existence that is absolutely simple and grounds all other beings, all other realities. So that is the argument if anyone can refute it, go on. Well, like, uh, yeah, 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 the argument, yeah. I don't know. The argument doesn't make any sense. Okay, so no, do you want to point... Like... Okay, so do you want to point I'll, out a hold on a premise that doesn't make sense? I'm trying to... Hold no, on. Mushi, just, don't just... speak. Mushi, don't speak. Let me, let me talk. Is this some... Yes. Is this... Is this... All right, so it looks like you're trying to use first order predicates for this. Do you have the actual predicates? Sorry, hold on a sec. Sorry, stop interrupting me. I want to know, do you actually have the predicates so I can evaluate the validity of the argument? Because I don't actually, I mean, having to translate this into the predicates makes it difficult. So if you have the predicates, do you, do you, do you can want you... it translated into formal logic? Yeah, I want the predicates. Why can't you just engage with us? It is. Because I don't understand it. I'm trying to understand it, right? Let me just... Okay, okay. Maybe I have to fucking... Oh. Man, dude, if I have to fucking type this thing out, I'll fucking do it. Just give me a sec. Shit. You don't have a fucking formalization? Fine. Oh, Hold on. Bro, holy... Okay, okay. I, I don't have a formalization. Well, that's what you need if you're going to make a syllogism like this. You need to know what the predicates are. Not necessarily. It's not necessary to make an argument in the form that you prefer, as long as the uh, uh, the premises are true and the, the premises follow from each other, the conclusion is true. If you think the premises, if any premise is not true or the conclusion does not follow, you can just point it out. Right. So how are we going to evaluate truth or fault, truth or falsity? Yeah, we don't know if you're talking about first order oh, logic. Yeah, I I can explain it to you if you want me. To. Okay. <laughs> 
I Sorry, what I can do is I can enter, uh, I can engage with the spirit of the argument, right? The, sure. the spirit of the argument presumes that it, uh, it's impossible for there to be uh, infinite contingencies, but I don't see why that would be true, right? Yes, yes, yes. So why wouldn't that be true, right? It is no. By uh, I don't mean contingencies. I mean dependencies, right? So I am not using the word contingency because contingency. Uh, in yeah, for for any uh, look, it, it, yeah, for any x is possible. At least as far as I'm concerned, for any x is possible that there's uh, that x depends on y at infinitum, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You you think? There's, okay, okay, okay. There's an infinite dependency chain. At least that's. Okay. Uh, yes, that's that's what you think, right? So we I can present the argument in an easier way as well. So we have this proposition that there is existence, right? This is the proposition that there is existence. That something exists. Yes, something exists and existence exists. There is existence, right? Okay. Now this proposition is. Uh, like an inclusive disjunction, right? Such that if any existent exists, the proposition, this proposition is true. Do you agree? Wait, you're saying that as long as something exists, something exists? Is that what you're saying? Yes, 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 it's a tautology, yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, so if, if a proposition, if for any existent X, right? If for any existent X, the proposition that X exists is true, then the proposition that there is existence is true. Right? Do you agree? Obviously, it's a tautology. You would agree. Right, but you, when you say there is existence, why would I take that as to be a different proposition than something exists? No, no, it's not a different proposition. What right, I'm so saying, something what, exists. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is that in the individual existent could be different, right? For example, in a possible world, the existent A exists, right? And in another possible world, the existent B exists, right? But in both the possible worlds, the proposition that there is existence would be true, right? Yeah, yeah, that something yeah. exists would be true, yeah. Yeah, it, exactly. No matter what the existent itself is, right? Yeah, what, yeah, what's the, okay, so hold on, let me, I'm trying to paste this argument, so let me see if I can. Sure, sure, you, you can grab a pen and paper. Why are we using disjunctions here? I'm oh, I already it. explained it to you. Hold on, sorry. Okay. Okay, so for any of yeah. P. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I, I, I can say it orally as well if you want me to. If there is A in P for a disjunction P, you mean if does that is that supposed to be translated to as one of the conjuncts is true? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, okay. I'll yeah, I'll explain it in this context as well. <clears throat> so wait, wait, so for any disjunction, if a dis if one of if that disjunction is true no 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 that's not what i'm saying let me explain what i'm saying wait but when you say look if a is in p such that a is true if and only if if part of the disjunct is true such that no uh, I, 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 i'll explain what i'm saying so what what i what i'm trying to say is that let us assume that p is an inclusive disjunct Right? P yeah. is an inclusive disjunct. Now, in P, 
uh, just just for you know just for an example obviously in existence the case would be different just for example in p there is a and there is b right these are two disjuncts right uh -huh. now the a and b themselves there are they are conjuncts right they are and gates right so and they wait. are composites of okay yeah wait which which part you're saying that a and b are prop propositions right no, no. a and b are propositions yeah. such that each each proposition is a conjunction is that what you're saying yeah sorry i disconnected yeah so you're saying you have a a, a disjunction p that's composed of two conjunctions a and b Yes, right. Yes. Let me just rejoin. I so, it, but I'm saying, but I'm saying, a itself is to be understood as x, x and y, and b is to be understood as z and z prime. Right. That's how we're supposed to understand it. Yeah, sorry, I cut off in between. But what are you saying? We're supposed to understand p as a disjunction of two yes. Uh, yes. And conjuncts. Inclusive. Yes, yes, an inclusive disjunction of two conjuncts. Okay, so okay, yeah. so the, let me just get this straight. Uh, we're saying that if I try to, because it, it's hard to even put this into, it's hard to even put this into. Um, oh, no, no. You, have you seen Boolean maps, like Boolean graphs uh, in computer I'm science? saying it's hard to put this into first order. It's hard to put it into first oh, yeah, order yeah, logic yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because, be because, yeah, normally, yeah. because normally we don't refer to propositions yes, as I variables. Yes, normally, yes, normally we were – look, so I'm, saying that, I'm saying that there's a problem translating your argument because normally yes, we refer – Normally, we refer to them as so. Like, look, if, if I want to say, um, it's it's hard to even like think about how to do this, right? We the the first proposition is something like p p is composed of uh, a and b um, or uh, c and d, right? That's p. That's how we understand p. Is just the propositions A and B or C and D, right? That's the disjunction P. Oh yeah. So oh yeah, and 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 I'll explain it to more to you. So have you ever read? You know, have you ever engaged with the uh, computer science or logic gates? Because it would be very easier if you know how logic gates work. Yeah, because I understand. I yeah, I know what. Okay. Yeah, I know what yeah, logic so, gates are. But. Okay, okay, okay. So I'll I'll explain it in a logic gate, right? So, suppose P is an OR gate, right? Mm -hmm. Now, P is connected to two AND gates A and B, right? Okay. Right? Okay. And now, A and B, in the A and B, uh, each, each of them have two inputs. For example, A has input B and C, right? And B has input, obviously, in, in, in case of existence, if you're Wait, but this is, a, this is actually This is actually harder to understand. It's easier to just understand it propositionally, right? Like, it's easier to just oh, understand oh. if yeah, we just... Because okay. it's, it's all based on Boolean logic anyway, so we can symbolize this, right? So yeah, the, first, yeah. the first disjunction, if, if you agree with what I'm saying, I can just send it to you. It's A and B or C and D, right? That's, oh. that's what P is present. And so... Um, then we say, ex yeah. In in this case, in the case of existence, it is not exactly what you are saying because. Uh, let me explain. What? what yeah, yeah. Let me explain. Let me explain. You are. This is great. this is your this is your master, Hadi or Moshi or whatever. This is the guy you wanted up here. We okay, can't even so get the fucking better. syllogism clear. Okay, okay so um, Jay, um, your your inability to understand this argument, and I know why it's frustrating. You're putting a space where you don't understand. That doesn't yeah, mean. It's it's not whoa, 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 whoa! Hold on one sec. Hold on one sec. You understand the argument? Do you hold on one sec? Do you understand the argument? Do you understand the argument? 
Dave, Do you understand the argument? Do you understand the argument? Stop avoiding the question. No, Do you understand the argument? He doesn't understand it. He doesn't even yeah. know what an inference yeah. rule is. Just, yeah. just don't, don't, don't even, don't even oh, address no. him. He's just being. So now, so now, so now what you're doing is you're throwing yeah. it on me. Just don't, don't, you don't. I'm not, asking you if you understand the fucking argument. He doesn't understand it. So don't even. Don't even stop ask him to try to. Stop, stop, stop. Yeah, Jack, so just you, you, we, you, we weren't look. To you. We weren't to you, Jack. Yeah, they, uh, hush, Josh. Hush, hush, hush. He, does, Jack, he, hush, he doesn't hush, understand hush, the argument. Just, just hush, hush away, Jack. Look, just tell him, the tell him the only thing you're interested in hearing him say, right, is what the argument is. Otherwise, tell him not to talk. Right. Yes, my friend Dave, so you are partially correct. You are absolutely correct okay. in what you are saying. Now, let me explain. Well, I'm absolutely how... correct or am I partially correct? Uh, you are correct in saying that uh, uh, you are correct in what you are saying. So it can be translated as, as D or C, oh sorry, D and C or E and F, right? That is what you are saying? Yeah, A and B or C and D, that's, that's, that's the proposition P that we're, we're, we're translating exactly. P to, right? Okay, exactly. so if, if there is... Uh, if there is an A in P such that A is true, if and only if B, uh, if and only if B and C are true, mm -hmm. then A is not a necessary condition for P to be true. I don't understand what this is saying, right? Because yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Let me explain. Let me explain. Well, so let me now, well, stop trying to explain before I ex explain the grievance. Why I don't understand the the, oh. the problem. Maybe if you understand my problem, then you can actually explain it, right? Sure, sure, sure. Please present. So, right. So, if what we're saying, the constituents of P are, are A and B or C and D, then um, I don't understand how it, uh, how it could be tr uh, not a necessary condition that at least one of those propositions are true. That's just, it's just like stating the truth conditions of that, that either A and B are true or C and D are true. So is this saying anything else than the truth conditions have to be met for this proposition to be true? No. So, so, so all this stuff, the entire first premise can just be understood as A and B or C and D. Yes. Okay. So, all right. All right. So, A and B or C and D. Now, I don't know if you want to replace that. All right. So, for any disjunction to be true, the necessary condition for it must be true. That's the same. That's just reserting the same. The first premise is just the same as the second premise. Say, if, look, for any disjunction to be true, the necessary conditions for it have to be met have to be true. That's the same thing as the first premise. If the first premise can be reduced to A and B or C and D, then the second premise is just A and B or C or D, C and D. Yeah. Let me explain what I'm saying. So you can, what you, so you, you have two identical premises. You have two identical premises then. Yeah. yeah. So we've cut one of the premises out. Okay. Fine. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. We uh, move on. Okay. Yeah. Can I explain? No. Okay. So, okay, so this third one. Yeah, yeah. For no, all propositions. Let, let him I talk. Just to, Sean, I want to make a clarification uh, because there's a uh, so you would understand. Now, Wait, so, sorry, am I wrong? It sounds yeah. like you you were saying that I was right in saying that the first two propositions uh, can be reduced. Yes. The first two propositions. Right. Okay. Can, so can the. I, can you please what? let me speak? Well, I just want, as long as I'm right that you're you're saying that, then I'd like to get through the entire argument. Why would I let him finish? First of all, this guy has two redundant premises. Why would I let him finish? I want to get through the fucking argument. Let him talk so he can explain. Oh, okay, okay, Dave, Dave. He already explained that he's just he's just reasserting the same claim, one premise after the other. No, you don't the only thing I need after that, and he actually down. agreed. He actually agreed that what I said was true. Why are you Dave, getting so I mad? Like just trying to cherry pick little but I can talk however the fuck I want. Get the let, fuck off my back, don't, asshole. Yeah, don't let these ankle biter let him, let him assholes let interfere. Yeah, shut up. All right, everybody, so, everybody, calm down. Everybody, calm down. So yeah, is it is it in yeah. fact the case that the same premise is being repeated twice? Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, sorry, yeah, he's being... The premise. Okay. Uh, that's correct, right? Yeah, yeah. Everybody agrees on that. So yeah, Dave is correct. All right, so let's... So do we want to move through the argument then? Um, we get rid of the second sure. premise. We just keep the first premise. Uh, for any P, if A well, and B, then... P. And, and C and D, uh, that's premise one. Uh, yeah, so, so what I did is just, I just reduced that to A and B or C and D. And then the, and then the second premise is just a restatement of the first, so we get rid of that. So the third premise is for all propositions Q that are dependent, such that Q is true if and only if there is an R that is true, then Q is not a necessary condition for P to be true. I have no idea what this, no idea what this means for all propositions Q that are dependent. So, uh, hold on, such that Q, all right, so let's just start with Q if and only if, let's just start with Q uh, if and only if R. Okay, and I'll try to translate the rest of it. Q, if and only if R. Uh, okay, so all propositions. It's so weird. You just ignore like okay, the first part okay. of the, I have, the I premise. Sent you, you just say I, yeah. Q, oh. if and only if R. Yeah, Sean, <laughs> I have I have sent you an updated uh, 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 premise one that uh, clears the confusion. Because since I was going to explain it in terms of existence, it would have made sense, but you weren't letting me speak. So I've just written it in, in, in it, the- That doesn't matter if it's in terms of existence or not. Yeah, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. I have, I have mentioned it in logical terms as well. You can read the premise. Okay, well, so we already, have, we already have premise one. There's no need to- No, like, no, I, I changed it. I, I, I changed it. I expanded oh it. You expanded it? Expanded, <laughs> expanded. Made it more clear. Look, at first, why don't you just tell me what, what inference that you think you're making here? Like, what's the inference rule that you think you're making here? That's basic logic, Boolean logic. No, no, I'm not asking for Boolean. Look, look our arguments take forms, right? If you tell me, look, just do me a favor and just in brackets, besides the premises, tell me what the deductions are and tell me what the premises are, right? Because it's easy to say what the deductions are, right? Uh, uh, for, for example, if I said P implies Q, P therefore Q, I can say um, I can get Q from uh, premise one and premise two via modus ponens, right? That's a type, that's an inference rule. So just tell me which, I don't even know which of these are premises and which of these are supposed to be deductions, right? It seems like P is true, is, is a deduction, is, is a premise, right? P, I don't know why that's any different than one in the first place because P is just the same as one. So it seems like that's the third time I don't think you're reasserting the same premise. I, I don't think he knows what an inference rule is. Is that right? Because I was told that that he doesn't actually know what an inference rule is. Is that right? What's what's this person's name? Average theist. Do you actually know what an inference rule is? Yeah, I know, but I'm not trained in formal logic. I'm trained trained in medieval philosophy. But you I understand can... that. You understand yeah. that the only yeah. inference we're going to understand, right, is going to be yeah, one. Yeah, is going to be yeah. one. Is going to be one in which the premises are linked together by an inference rule, right? Otherwise, we're not going to understand the inference. See, okay. so this is just going to be fruitless, Josh. He doesn't even know what an inference rule is. In fact, none of them know. No, uh, and do you, do you know every philosophy? No. But we both have a sense of what logic is. If I make a logical fallacy, you can show it. Why do I have we to don't ensure? understand what type of inference you're making. I mean, like, look, it looks like, look, how is, how is, how is it different? How is premise four, when you agreed with my reduction from one to A and B or C and D, then how is P is true, which is just the co composition is what, just what P is supposed to be composed of. How is premise four even any different than premise one? 
It just seems like you're reasserting the same premise three times in the same in one argument. And then this other thing doesn't even make sense. I can't even understand for all propositions that are dependent such that Q is true if and only if R. So uh, so maybe if I said uh, for all X. Um, For all x, what would I say? X if and let's only get, if. Let's get to Troyer. To Troyer, can you join the stage because he's actually yeah, dealt with this argument him, before. I him an already, Thank you, to Troyer. Come and address. The... I thought you guys said uh, the Troyer didn't make any argument. He never heard any argument. Yeah, Detroyer, you've dealt with um, this this average theist argument before, right? Putative. Well, maybe, maybe he fucking made a, maybe he wrote it down. So it's not like gobbledygook. Detroit, are you there? Yeah. No, I don't think we've gotten there yet. Hello? Yeah. Do you remember this average theist trying to give you this ar argument about, um, disjunctions and logic gate? Um, that was the thing the other What's day. Up, there was mostly with Venus and the other guy, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Josh, show him the Sorry, did, show him the argument. Did you can't okay. copy anything from DMs? Yes, you can. What are you talking about? What are you crazy? I can. <laughs> I can oh crazy. yes, I can. Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's see. Premise one, for any disjunction P, so I take it the P is a statement, the main operator, which is a disjunction, okay. Or perhaps it's a disjunction of many things. If there is an A in P, I assume that means a disjunct, such that uh -huh. A is true only and only if, that's I assume they mean if and only if, if B only and if. C are true, then a is not a necessary condition for P to be true. No, um, this is the old one. Most, uh, let me send you the... the, the other no, one. that was the it's, new one. Because that's I, false. I yeah, yeah, the, let me send you... Okay. For any disjunction P, if there is an A and P such that A is true, if and only if B and C and the truth of the disjunction of the conjuncts of A and B imply the truth of P, then the truth of A or B is not a necessary condition for P to be true. Now, there's a whole lot of redundancy. So that's an updated right? one. I don't even let know me, if that's false, read. right? Where, can someone, the one that I read is false in general. So That's I, different than the one it? you just read? It's, the one that you read is different than what I, what I just read, definitely. Yours had a lot more. Okay, too. well, I'm I'm not sure that that's any better, to be honest with you. It might not be any better, but <laughs> the one I read is definitely false, and I can give an example. Okay. So um, how about he articulates it, and you guys can go step by step and see if there's progress or not. Rashad, now, like, no, 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 no. Just don't, don't let these other people interfere. Detroit knows how to handle yeah, okay. it. Interfere with what? Yeah, with you just, just be quiet. Interfere. Yeah, wait, Jack. Just Jack, be quiet. Come on. Well, why, why, we're not interested in what you have to say. Stop you talking. You don't have to be interested. Stop talking. Brother, Can somebody no. stop him from talking, okay. no, please? No, I don't think Jack, that's the way the Somebody going to stop these calm people down. from talking? Yeah, Jack, Brother, okay. guys, yeah, guys, yeah, yeah, okay. relax. You've been talking among each other for the past 20 minutes. Like, yeah. If someone else talks, how dare you? You know. Look, you guys don't even know what the argument is. Yes, we don't know anything about anything, Jack. That doesn't. Well, you don't know what the argument is, right? You guys said you don't know the argument either. Yeah, that's we're trying to figure it out. So we're not interested in your in. So stop, stop. How about this? How about only two people talk, Elias and someone else? Friction and... um. Um, that guy. And then I'll come back Just Ilyas and, and Friction talk, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, Ilyas Hello? and Friction, go ahead. Yeah, if, um, I'm just going to take a look at this. It seems like people just want to talk. I'm going to take a minute and come back and give them my thoughts. Okay, cool. And then I, I was thinking, uh, Ilyas, what you can do is if you can just explain each premise since you didn't write down the inference rule. Ilyas can just explain it to you guys. Every step of the way, you have to explain. He doesn't know what the inference is. Then it's not a good is. argument. No, right? I, 
No, that's not, I, that's, that's, that's not true at all. Sean. He he know he doesn't know what the inference rule is. That's I, the problem. I don't, I, I don't know analytic philosophy, but I know Arabic philosophy, and obviously we use the same logic. If I make a logical fallacy, or or if when, I when you say logical... you use the same logic, right? The logic that we're using employs inference rules. Yeah, what is an in? Okay, you tell me what an inference rule is, and I will tell you it's Arabic translation. Simple. Well, there's a bunch of different rules. Yeah. So I will present the argument as it is, right? If I make a logical fallacy or if I don't... Well, we use don't know so We forth. don't know what rule of inference you're trying to employ. He did say when he before he read it that he was open to having it uh, open, you know, any fallacies to be... Yeah, but, we, but the know. point is we don't even we know what there. inference he's trying to employ. And I can see why. <laughs> Wait, Detroit, are, are you going to try to translate this? Because I want to see the translation. Yeah. Did he send you his revised version, the one that starts with for any disjunction P, if there is a P, if, and, yeah. an A in P such that A, blah, blah, blah? Yes, I just sent you one premise. We can go one by one, right? So, Friction, you can read the first premise and we can talk about it. It's just like if you guys have like you think you say you have like a really good argument, right? You have like undeniable proof of God's existence, but the best you can come up with is somebody forming an analytical argument that admits they don't know analytic philosophy. No, like it's not. It's not an analytic argument. Spinoza made it as well in some sense, and he didn't know analytic philosophy. And Arabic Sorry, philosophers uh, have been making it for centuries, and they didn't know what you're. Yeah, you understand? Do you understand that the rules of inference in classical logic go back to before Aristotle, right? You understand that, right? Yeah, but I have studied them in Arabic. So it has nothing to do with analytic philosophy, right? The same rules of influence. Uh, sorry, the same rules of inference were employed in the year 400 BC. Right. It has nothing to do with analytic philosophy. He says he knows them in Arabic. Well, then he should get a dictionary <clears throat> and figure out how to translate them he's, into English. He's, he's in the process of doing that, you okay. know what I mean? Oh yeah, we'll see. Okay, brother. Detroiter's yeah. gonna do it for him. <laughs> so what are you talking about? No, yeah, it's fine. We can work together. Fine, Try I'm I'll, I'm gonna up my, my Patreon uh Yes, destroyer. What do you think about the destroyer? What do you think about the first premise? He's probably he's AFK just looking at it right now. Oh, okay. I think he's still trying to figure out how to fucking write it down. No, I have written it down. I sent it to destroyer. Well, I think Detroit is trying to figure out how to write it down. Oh, okay, okay, okay. By the way, Jack, I really like your profile picture. It's very cute. That's Darth Dawkins. That's Darth Dawkins' yearbook photo. Oh, wait, no way. Yeah, no way. I promise. Where did you find that? Well, somebody I'm went to know. his somebody went to his <laughs> local <laughs> library and found his yearbook wow, and copied it and sent it to me. Guy. <laughs> he was an attractive guy. Yeah, he has an attractive <laughs> wife. He had an attractive wife too. Oh. Wait, that's Darth. Yeah, that's, that's Darth, Darth Dawkins. <laughs> No way, wow. I promise. Oh man, think of what a life he could have had if he didn't go so funny. Isn't that wild? Yeah, he's a mess. Something's so, wrong with him, man. He looks like a certified so, Chad. So while, while we have, while we have a minute, Jack, do you have? So while we have a minute, does Jack have an objection or a contradiction in omnipotence? I'm curious to hear. Yeah, but I mean. It would take a while to explain. It's easy to explain. There are act-based theories and there are results-based theories. Result-based theories are vacuous. Act-based theories are incoherent. Okay, I'm back. Um, I've been trying to trying to translate this into something <laughs> sort of resembling <laughs> an argument, but I, I'm I don't. One way I might be able to understand is if you were, you kind of shortened this and said something like. Uh, I can I can but, tell you in um, terms of uh, logic gates if you want me to. 
I can right. send you a logic yeah, gate. Right. I'm trying can, to... can you tell me in forms of logic? I don't see what the gate has to do with anything. No, it obviously the logic gate has to do everything with this. The logic gate is just an illustration, right? Yeah, yeah. You could so talk I, in terms I, of the logic, and that would be even better. I did talk in front of logic, in in terms of logic. Uh, now, what can I do? If you don't understand, I can vocalize it. That's the best I can do. So, Wait, did you, write, did you try to write something down? Did you try to translate it? Send it no, to me? I didn't, because I'm I'm on my I'm on my tablet. I'm not I'm not on my computer. I don't feel like writing something down. It's it's, it's tough to figure out what to write anyway, because this I mean this first premise doesn't even seem to be used anywhere. So like I could look at it and try to try to interpret it because <laughs> it's such a weird conditional. It's a simple um, logic and, gate. It, and All right, so, so why don't how about any part you don't why don't you guys give us an informal it? argument? Why don't you guys just give us any but, informal off the cuff argument? Look, right? I mean, look, this look, guy look, can't even tell us what the fucking inference look, rule is key, supposed to be from premise to premise, right? Look, the the first one to three are just irrelevant, right? It's the, the argument is basically four, five, six, and seven. Five and seven mm -hmm. are contradictions, right? Yes. So. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, six is just false. Um, I don't know what to say about that. I don't. It's just like straightforwardly false. Oh no, six um, six follows from the previous one, so you cannot. So which one does it follow false. from? Three. It follows from one and uh, two and three. How? When once we talk about one, then we can move on to talk about further ones. But can you tell me how it follows from them? I don't. And also, I mean, it's just false anyway. So if it's false, then what? Right. One, look, look there's a question about. Sorry, false. I want to hear how you think it's false because there's a way I'm interpreting it as false, and I want to see if you're interpreting it the same way. The way I'm thinking okay. of it is that triangles are like three-sided, but those are dependent propositions because they depend on sides or something like that. But they're obviously necessary. Is that the idea that you have, or, or is it different? No, look, a disjunction can be some contingent or dependent proposition, however you're putting it. But a necessary condition for the disjunction being true is you know, at least one of his disjuncts being true. That condition itself is not necessary. It's, it could depend on things. <laughs> so, but, so it can be a necessary condition for something without itself being necessary or not. Yes, yes, I'm condition. not arguing for a necessary existence in this argument. Okay, so, but then you want to say that the dependent proposition can't be a necessary condition, but there's no, yes. I mean, that's just false. That's an example of why that's false. No, I'll, I'll prove it to you. Uh, I, okay. You just. I'd what? like to see a proof for an obvious falsehood. I just gave an example of how it's false. Like, what? No, what? here we are just talking about in terms of existence, not in terms of anything else. In terms of existence. Yes, in, in terms of existence. Nowhere in this false. argument does it mention existence. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, that is why I just uh, sent it as a uh, way you could understand. If you want me to write all of it, then I I would obviously add existence and so on. So I just sent it to you so you can have an idea of it and then follow me when I'm speaking. So you sent intentionally a worse version of the argument that doesn't get not the exact. idea. No, not okay. a worse version of the argument, but a more general version. An argument that you wouldn't endorse that contains, contains a false premise because I don't, okay. Um, yeah, if you uh, yeah, if you read it in t outside of existence, that is exactly why when the, fo the fourth premise, P is true, so the, the disjunction here is the proposition that there is existence. P, if you read P as that there is existence, then, then it would make sense. There is existence. Yes. That's not a disjunction, though. No, it is. It's not in the form of a disjunction. <laughs> what, <laughs> the proposition? Yeah. No, it is. Disjunction, <laughs> is, a, disjunction is a type of formula. It's a type of statement. And there... You know, there is existence. It's not a disjunction. <laughs> There's no or. It is. What it, are you saying? No, 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 no. You don't understand. There is existence. I know what you're going to say, but it's wrong, right? You're going to say, no, oh, you wrong. can understand it's... the statement as meaning something like either A or B or C or D, where those are all the But That's not the statement, right? That's the fact that you can in, translate it to something like that doesn't mean that the original statement was a disjunction. No, it signifies, just, it signifies a disjunction. It signifies a disjunction. It signifies a disjunction. 
Yeah, what? why are you being yeah? So in in computer logic, I don't know what kind of I I I'll be honest, I don't know your logic. I don't know my logical systems, and it is following in that. If you want me to translate my logical system into your logical system, that I can do, right? So if in your logical statement, it's not a uh, a proposition, cannot be a disjunct. No problem, but in my way, in terms uh, of its form, it's not a disjunction. Yeah, obviously, in its form, it's not. When did I say in its form it is? Well, that's what I'm taking a disjunction. Disjun okay, okay. Is something that La, is disjunction is a form of property. Okay. Okay, let me. Can I explain? Or do you want to engage with the argument? Or should I explain the argument? Yeah, so let's. I mean, you could do just as well by saying, you know, the disjunction either A exists or B exists or C exists you know, leaving aside the complicated issue of fixing the domain. Um, and that's no, it's, it's a, it's it, a right? Yeah, it's a very necessary part of the argument. I'll explain how. What? What? I'm, I'm happy to just say that the disjunction P is the statement like either A exists or B exists or C exists for all the possible existentials. For all the true existential statements, or for all the possible ones, I don't, I'm not exactly sure um, what you're getting at, but something like that. Mm -hmm. And then we can go on, right? Uh, there's some issues with that, but I, I'm happy to bracket those. Okay. All right, and then the necessary condition for that disjunction being true is true. Well, what, what's the necessary condition for that disjunction being true? at least one of the propositions being true. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. Any dependent proposition is not a necessary condition. So is this, yes. is, is the proposition that at least one of those disjuncts is true, dependent or independent? What? We already went over the necessary condition for that proposition being true, for the disjunction being true, is that at least one of his disjuncts are true? Is the proposition yes. then that at least one of his disjuncts are true, dependent or independent? This proposition. <laughs> yes, that's we just that's what who, the necessary who, condition who, is, right? That's the necessary who, condition for B being true. We just went over that, right? So then we yeah. want to ask to to assess whether six is true. Um. Well, in this case, but also- We are talking about ontological propositions here, not general propositions. So an ontological yeah. proposition, yeah. So so I think that's where you are confusing this. Who, who is this person who keeps on laughing? Who is this person who keeps well, on look, laughing? Anything, I, anything I've said about the disjunction here, it doesn't matter which particular disjunction no, it, you have. It does, right? it does matter. The truth condition, no, it doesn't, because the truth conditions for a disjunction the necessary condition for the truth of the disjunction is that at least one of the disjuncts are true. Yes, yes, right? yes. Okay. So if you want to say that. Oh, and here, here, what are you meaning by the disjunct? What am I meaning by the disjunct? Yeah. Do you mean only A as a disjunct, or do you mean, for example, even if only D is true, even then P would be true? How are you understanding it? Because I mean that even if D is true, P would be true because obviously, even if I say D exists, right? And D is conceptually a part of A, right? But C does not exist, so A does not exist, right? But even if D exists, the proposition that there is existence would be true. Look, we already went over. Look, I, I, you're kind of saying nonsense. The, the point is that the disjunction is true, regardless whether you're talking about a disjunction of existential propositions or whatever. No, no, I'm, I'm asking you, given. how are you understanding the disjunction? How are you understanding the disjunct? By a disjunct, do you understand A, the truth of A, or do you understand that even if D is true, the proposition or, or the disjunction P would be true? The disjunction is true if, as long as at least one of the disjuncts are true. And yeah, the what do you mean? like there exists uh -huh. an X such that whatever, you know, the existential statement. Yes, yes, yes. So any existential proposition, right? So there are there can be two types of existential proposition, right? One type of existential proposition is that is the one which can only be true even if if some other proposition is true. And the falsification of some other proposition uh, implies the uh, the falsehood of this proposition. Or the other kind of existential proposition could be that 
the falsification or the falsehood of any other proposition does not uh, affect the truth value of this proposition, right? Does not. So in other words, it could be true or false, regardless of the truth of any other existential proposition? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Well, kind of trivially, there won't be any of those, but we could get into that. I, I'm just not see how that's. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. understand. That's that's your position, obviously. That's, that's no. It's just going to be work. a point of logic that, you, like, you can just kind of trivially show that. Because um, any another way to put it that is that an existential proposition is independent if and only if it neither entails the truth of nor the falsehood of any other existential any distinct existential proposition. But actually, it's oh, kind of yeah. trivial to show from any from anyone that it will entail the truth or falsehood of an, in fact, an infinitely many infinite number of distinct existential propositions. So, I mean, we can get into that. But the, the point I want to make is um, that's not anyway, really. For, I'm, I'm not sure yeah. where this was getting from because we were talking about um, what the necessary condition was for the disjunction in the first place, right? And the necessary condition for the disjunction of all existential propositions is that at least one of those disjuncts, at least one of those existential propositions is true. And I want to ask, you know, in light of what you're, where you're going with this argument, especially in premise six, whether that condition, the condition that at least one of those disjuncts is true, um, whether that's itself dependent or independent as a proposition, right? What do you mean Statement as a proposition? The what proposition that, that the proposition that at least one of the disjuncts. Yeah, what do you mean by dependence in this case? What do you mean by dependence? Obviously, I'm using, it's not an, I'm using yeah. it in the way that you are, right? It's dependent. No, no, my, my, my dependence is just for ontological propositions. It's not for general propositions. Well, then it's, then your argument's just going to commit a category mistake, right? How? Well, you, you want to say that, um, again, the, the inference isn't very clear, so I'm just kind of putting pieces together here. So I'm, anyway, I'm, so I'm, I'm really sorry, but I have to go for dinner. Uh, okay. in, inshallah, we can, we can continue this. And well, I, can say I, in, I, I can say in 10 seconds what the, the, the okay, okay, inference okay. I think you're trying to make and why I think that's going to be kind of more safe, which is that you're, you're trying to say that, look, the, the, the necessary condition for the truth of um, this disjunction can't be a dependent proposition. So it has to be an independent proposition. But if you just granted to me that the necessary condition for the truth of the disjunction is itself not something that could be dependent or independent because it's not an ontolog uh, ontological proposition, then it's just a category mistake to say that it's um, independent rather than dependent because it can't be either, right? You see what I'm saying? No, no it's an ontological proposition. No, 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 but you said, you, when I said the necessary condition for the truth of the disjunction P is that at mm -hmm. least one of the disjunctions, are, one of the disjuncts are true, you said that that's not an ontological proposition. Yeah, yeah, it's, not an say, it's, a, it's a descriptive proposition, it's not an ontological proposition. It's, it it sure. is not a proposition that says that, oh, for any existent, if X exists, then the proposition that there is X is an ontological proposition. Obviously, it is not. I am just talking about ontological propositions and the conjunction of the, oh, sorry, the disjunction of the ontological propositions. So the essence, yes. the argument essentially is this, right? That for any uh, uh, ontological proposition, right, if it is, uh, if it is a conjunction, you can say, of distinct other ontological propositions, right, then that uh, ontological proposition itself is not a necessary condition uh, for the proper for the truth value or the for the truth of uh, p or for the truth of uh, the proposition that there is existence right because it is absolutely possible for uh, the proposition that there is existence to be true even without the proposition that uh, uh, for example that this composite is true now uh, obviously, the, all, all these are not necessary conditions, right? So, if any, so you all, all the... with me what the, ne the necessary condition for the truth of the disjunction was. Yeah, yeah, you yeah can, can, give, can you let? But you can go through a bunch of different options for. Yeah, yeah, there. Oh, there have. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, I understand. Those you are doing an. Conditions. Yeah, you are doing an application fallacy here. So. What? Uh, yeah, yeah. So the thing is uh, that now. Yeah. So the thing is that now, 
if this proposition, right, any composite proposition, by definition, cannot be a necessary condition, right? it, it can be a sufficient condition, of course, but it cannot be a necessary condition for the truth value of the proposition P. So by definition, there has to be an atomic uh, ontological proposition such that it is the necessary condition for, uh, mm. for, for the proposition uh, that there is existence. No, no, you already yeah, agreed oh, with me oh, what I, the necessary condition for the truth of the disjunction was. Right? You, yeah. you can't say, oh, I agree that the necessary condition for the truth of the disjunction is that at least one of the disjuncts is true. But also, the necessary condition for the truth of the dis disjunction is that there's this like, atomic independent proposition. That's just, that's just false, right? It, those two things aren't... The first one is the actual necessary condition for the truth of the disjunction, whether it's ontological propositions or otherwise. You can say that the truth of a particular disjunct and its truth being some necessary thing is going to be a sufficient condition for the truth of the disjunction. But that's yeah, not so, the necessary uh, yeah, condition. Yeah, it's simple. A, uh, a sufficient condition cannot be met un until a necessary condition is met. The necessary condition being met is the condition that at least one of the disjuncts are true. We already went over this. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, already been met. Thing. It doesn't yeah. have into the, yeah. uh, any ontological. Yeah, and, 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 That's and, where yeah, you're making and, a category and, mistake. Yeah, and one of the disjuncts cannot be true, right? Unless an atomic proposition is true. Yeah, at least one of the disjuncts. Yeah. Well, yeah, at because least one of the this, uh, yeah. True, yeah. yeah, but disjuncts cannot be true unless an atomic proposition is true. Are the disjuncts anyway, atomic I have propositions? To, I have, yeah, I, I have to go for lunch or oh, dinner. Uh, so we can continue this discussion. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Does anyone so else what understand about... the, the point? Because what, what were you um, saying about the disjuncts? Well, they're all are they so, all leaving? Unbelievable. I don't know. The, are... the main the main the initial point was well, we have this huge disjunction. Let's leave aside um, the issues with the construction of a disjunction like that. But whatever, um, leave that aside. Um, we have this disjunction of propositions. They're existential propositions, which are just going to be of the form there exists an X such that whatever. Um, and all the statements like that, I guess, if well, presumably we're looking at like all the possible the existential statements like that, and they're saying something like, um, that's, that's our understanding or translating the statement there is existence. Either there is this, or there is this, or there is this, you know, and at least one of those is true. And I was just pointing out, okay, what's the necessary condition for that statement being true? Um, at least one of the disjuncts being true, right? That's just what it means for a disjunction to be true, right. regardless whether we're talking about a disjunction of existential propositions or anything else, right? This is just the basic fact about disjunctions. And then um, he try he's trying to make this move where you go from, well, now let's look at the, the sort of disjuncts any disjunct is either itself independent or dependent, and somehow there has to be some atomic proposition that's independent and necessary that makes, and that's a necessary condition. What? Now, you can try to make some argument that there is one of the disjuncts is true in that way, but that's not going to follow, that's not going to constitute the necessary condition for the truth of the disjunction. We just explicated what the truth of the disjunction the truth conditions for the disjunction were at least one of the disjuncts are true. And if it turns out that one of the disjuncts, you know, that's true, that's true. is some dependent or whatever proposition, then okay, so what? <laughs> oh, bro, we get that's it. right, that's right. But can you explain one more time? I think I I'd rather missed not. the sufficient conditions for a disjunction being <laughs> true. <laughs> Just one more time, Detroit. I don't know what the sufficient conditions are. Just tell me. Florian, I really hope this was recorded because Durr is going to get so much pleasure out of Detroit. <laughs> out of Detroit's time. The British guy was wasted uh, in this way. He's <laughs> and, and, and 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 listen listen to this premise, right? And I forget the fact that this premise is itself a mess. I just don't see how it's being used in the argument. Uh, it seems to me the argument starts at premise four, but whatever. That's right. Um, for, <laughs> for any disjunction P, if there is an A in P, 
unspecified, such that A is true only and only if, I assume it means if and only if, B and C, what are B and C, right? And the truth of the disjunction of the conjuncts of A and B, A and B of conjuncts, okay, imply the truth of P, then the truth or of A or B, is it the truth of the disjunction or the truth of each of them independently? I don't know. It is not a necessary condition for P to be true. Man, what? how am I supposed to parse right. this? Wow. I tried doing the same thing, and I got him to agree that it that was, was his just... revised version. But his first version was better, right? Because the first version, the first version you can version at least a false premise. The first version, the premise is just false. But at least it was coherent. Like you could like reduce it to a um, something yeah, so intelligible. The first, the first version said, for any disjunction p, if there is an a in p such that a is true, only and only if. Okay, if and only if. B and C are true, then A is not a necessary condition for P to be true. So one way to interpret well, the quote-unquote necessary condition here, and maybe this is I what just they want to do elsewhere, is that... The, the way I read that was that that's just part of the disjunction, but that just means that it's not, necess it's not a necessary condition for the disjunction because the, the other disjunct could be true. That's well, the but, yeah, so so the problem with this is that if the all the disjuncts are logically equivalent, then um, it'll be true that one of those disjuncts is true if and only if the other two are true. But it's not going to be true that it's possible that the disjunction is true if A is false. Because it follows from the falsehood of A that the other two disjuncts are false. Right, right. So um, now that might be a special case, but it's a fact. Presumably, we're quantifying over all proper, all disjunctive propositions here, and all possible disjuncts. So, if, so I, I, let me give you an example. Um, well, I'm going to end up giving you three logically equivalent statements. Um, I guess the first one's going to be P or P, the second one will be P and P, and the third one will be P, okay? Um, now, you might say, it is true that um, the, that first disjunction, P or P, is true only if right, the other two are true. But it's not true that, in a sense, that first disjunction is not a necessary condition for the truth of the disjunction because in the sense that it's not possible that the other two disjuncts, uh, either of them be true if the first is false, because the first being false entails that the other two are false. They're all logically equivalent. So if we're, if we're understanding necessary condition in this way, in the sense that um, the um, how do I put this exactly? The truth of this condition, um, sorry, the, the truth of the statement in question entails the truth of this condition. All right, so the truth of the disjunction entails the truth of this disjunct. That's how necessary condition is being used in that premise. Then, then this overall premise is false. But, Yeah. I didn't even get that out of that fucking premise. Well, it's difficult because, you know, I I don't know. It's a matter of interpretation. I'm <laughs> like, these are... Uh, but anyway, it doesn't really matter because presumably the, the revised version is the one that matters, but then that's the one that... It's this long dis uh, conditional for any... For any disjunction, quantifying over disjunctive, pro for any disjunction of existential propositions, I guess, or or for the particular disjunction they have in mind, I guess, which is going to be the disjunction of all of them. Uh, so that could probably be phrased better. But if that's what he wants to say, then whatever. Um, there is at least one disjunct in that disjunction, such that it is true if and only if. I'm oh, sorry, if there is a disjunction in that 
uh, if there is a disjunct in that disjunction such that it is true if and only if there are two other statements, B and C. I think you've uh, I think you've spent enough time on the worst argument we've seen for a long I time. think he means to say when he says B and C and the truth of the disjunctions of the conjuncts of A and B, I think he means B and C there because he means A and B there. It doesn't it means it makes even less sense. Whatever, I don't know. Someone else can try to patch it together. Man, just fuck, fuck that guy. Fucking who was it? It was it was Moshi and that other guy. Was was his name? Uh, Wait, Moshi's still uh, here, right? Dude. Moshi's still here. Oh no, Moshi ran away too. Motherfucker! You know what's oh. funny is that um, unbelievable. Daddy? It wasn't just it wasn't just yeah. the player who had to try to figure this out. You know who else had to try to figure this out, Scott? Who? Dear? Dog. Oh fuck! Oh yeah. I mean, this, the dog this has is been, reminiscent has been... of certain dog arguments, so I don't know. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that was... My <laughs> uh, <laughs> dog can't figure out his own. <laughs> oh, my God. What? That sort of makes me wonder why dog couldn't figure it out, right? <laughs> like, it should have been immediately obvious the dog that the guy was saying. Dog. We gotta ask dog like what he is. Like. That's what he likes. Man, that yeah, You're that guy, with them so much. That guy and fucking Hattie that they fucking were like, oh yeah, bring this guy up. I thought it was gonna be an interesting argument. It was just this fucking trash. Yeah, because you know the only fucking argument they're gonna give is some fucking contingency argument from like the PSR, or some stupid shit. They don't want to come out and say it because they possibly already know what the objections are by the way if anyone's interested i i mentioned in passing but like glossed over it a, a, a like a brief logical point that if we're understanding a dependent sorry an independent existential proposition as one which neither entails the truth of nor the falsehood of any distinct existential propositions then trivially there are no such propositions because for many, for many existential propositions, you can um, prove a variety, in fact, an infinite number of other existential propositions or the falsehood of others. So, yeah, that's just, and that's just the point of logic, and I can sort of. Why don't we get that, that guy Khalil is in the audience, why don't we get him up here to explain how you got uh, Schaffer's idea right? Oh, that would be good. Yeah, Haiti or John or Himothy, can you invite Khalil up so he can explain to Detroit why he got Schaeffer's idea wrong? Yeah, I'll invite him. I'm not going to stay for so long. I, I will talk to Khalil or whoever. They want to, but I want to record or re-record my stupid video on the after principle stuff. Yeah, he, he can't come up. Hey, I don't know. You, uh, uh, I don't know if you guys. You got, we got Rashad. I don't know if you guys want to talk to him. Talk to you. I record Josh. I recorded this video on the Patrick principle stuff, and uh, yeah. <laughs> like I uploaded it. I'm like, eh, I'm not happy with this. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna redo it. <laughs> I saw your notes. So I wanted to do that. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that notes I'm I'm using for so the way I made the video originally was kind of had the notes on screen and then like a a box of you know face cam or whatever in the corner. Uh huh. And I'm kind of just reading it and explaining certain bits of it and stuff. I'm gonna do it differently. I'm just gonna not have the document on screen. I'll have certain elements come on like I did in the other videos, but it's just gonna be mostly talking. Um. um. You gotta, you gotta have more charisma, though. Yeah, that's the other thing. In in the one I recorded, it's I don't know. I tried a little bit, but it wasn't good enough. <laughs> I'm gonna try a little bit more. Be a little bit more, uh, a little bit. I don't know, personable. I don't think that's Detroyer's thing. I think he's perfect. It's difficult. It's difficult. Like I'm cocaine. just trying to like perfect the way he is. <laughs> I'm just trying to like communicate the ideas or whatever, and it's like 
it's an extra effort to try to. Boyer, did try you to... hear the guy's Joe Pesci impression? <laughs> I could, I can he almost hear a little bit of it in his voice, so I can see how. Oh, yeah, do, you Joe see how <laughs> do you, Joe Pesci? Yeah. Joe Pesci. This so. fucking Detroit but guy, he's fine the fucking way he is. This uh, motherfucker. I'm still here to see if, if someone has an argument. If there's a fucked up argument, just give it to fucking Detroit. That's great. That's great. Wait, let's say, what's yeah. the Modi pony on that? Yeah. Brilliant. You know what else you can do, Detroit? <laughs> He can also do a Barthologist impression. Yeah, he does a really good one. Yeah, but these, these you... impressions, <laughs> he can also do it like you a, know how a, you know a your New phone, York Jew impression. Right? You like can a... turn your phone on and off at the same time. <laughs> he sounds exactly. What's wrong with you guys? He, he just... sounds. <laughs> he sounds exactly. You have no foundation. There's no way I could tell them apart. Oh my god. There's, 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 there's no way I could tell him apart. Tell the two of them apart. That is just unbelievable. Wait, Look at the TV. The TV's plugged in. It's on. It's off. Where's the contradiction? There's a contradiction. You should go into BC and troll people with that voice. Oh my god. It is unbelievable. I've thought about it. Cool. I have thought yeah. about it. Oh my god. Wait, but now do the Gary V. Do the Gary V. Oh, that's. You just want me to read the script you gave me? Yeah. <laughs> Is that yeah. just my normal yeah. voice, I think? Yeah, pretty much. It's about drive and motivation. It's about vision. It's about waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning and buying shit from garage sales and putting it on Facebook Marketplace. It's about snorting pre workout before going to the gym. <laughs> yeah. It's about smuggling crack onto the plane. <clears throat> it's about motivation. I, I would I would need to listen to him some more. Yeah, you should. Talks about when he was like a kid, he had like eight jobs or some shit. Right. I, I'll I'll listen to some of that and uh, see what I come up with. I work three twelve-hour oh, shifts a day. A different version of the first premise. I didn't. I just noticed this. Any disjunction P, if there is an A and B, and P, <laughs> and P <laughs> such that A is a conjunction of C and D. Okay, all right. So, this is why Detroyer is the man to hand this. So there's a there's at least there's a disjunct there's a disjunct in the disjunction which is itself a conjunction. Okay. Three and days from now he'll go. Okay, I see what it is now. And the truth of the disjunction <laughs> of the conjuncts of A. Imply the truth of P. Then the truth of A is not an easy condition for P to be true. Um, what I want to know is, did these guys realize that they had, you know, they thought they had this argument that was just going to, you know, destroy and, and, you know, confirm God's existence, and they seemed so excited. I don't know what and the fuck they were thinking. They have to have, an ex like, Wait. they have to have a bunch of atheists and agnostics try to explain it to them, and then they just all leave. Wait, doesn't it's he also hysterical. sound like it's unbelievable? So they still have a room you guys can join. For understanding if you this have more questions. in the way we I, I did in the first version of this premise, this one's going to be false for the same reason. Um, more I'm questions? Saying. Rashad, they never fucking, they still never rendered an argument. If you want to call this this Bro, thing that Elias sent us that is utterly incoherent that we've had to spend the last two hours trying to decipher. If you want to call that your argument, yeah, well, be well, my we, guest. We didn't spend two hours deciphering it because you didn't understand it from the beginning. So you kind of oh, you, it? you can explain oh, it. You so understand it? Oh, explain it to me, then, to Rashad. Can you explain so it to us, Rashad? Right, engage. right. Explain the argument. So friction explain. was trying to engage. So he can continue <laughs> asking questions, Just clarifying bloviating. questions, or I'll he can ask something. for. Or he can ask for a different version of this so that he could understand it better. Uh, but so far, it doesn't seem like he's articulating, hey, this is the clear problem. Rather, he's saying, hey, the way it's written here, it could be written this way or this way. So I think, sure? I think he's entitled the to ask more questions. Just right? now Are you serious? Is so how, so you can me. sit there the and say that. Like, Wait, hold on a second. Detroit, or, what? Let me, I, I just noticed, because uh, I, I don't, don't really know this app. Someone had sent in the back channel some version of the premise like 40 minutes ago. Um, and it's a, a bit better written than the second version, but it's more plainly false. So 
Um, again, it's, it reads, for any disjunction P, if there is an A and B in P, so those are disjuncts to P, such that A is a conjunction of C and D, so, um, and C and D and the truth of disjunction of the conjuncts of A imply the truth of P, then the truth of A is not a necessary condition for P to be true. If by the truth of A is not a necessary condition for P to be true, we entail something like, or mean something like, it is possible that the disjunction P is true if A is false. Um, that's not true, right? There are possible disjunctions that satisfy these properties for which the falsehood of that disjunction would entail the falsehood of the whole disjunct. Hi. Right? Yeah. So it, I could, this be I any good? Do, Wait, can someone mute some, but okay. Francesco or whatever? Oh, sorry about that. And this is kind of, it's, the examples I would give are kind of like, um, kind of like the, the previous one I gave, where the falsehood of one of those, just of this disjunct, in this case, the disjunct is going to be itself a conjunction of two other more basic formulas, maybe atomic, whatever, you know, sentence letters. The falsehood of that entails the falsehood of all the other ones. Then it's not going to be possible, logically, that this disjunction, disjunct is false, and yet the overall disjunction is true, because the falsehood of this disjunction this disjunct entails the falsehood of all the disjuncts, and so the falsehood of the disjunction. Um, Can you speak English? So that's, Can you sp you know, it, would be easier, it would be easier to write out. But, yeah. um, but what's funny is that Rashad was like, oh, I don't see any specific criticisms. And there were several times where we said, this premise is straightforwardly false. This premise is straightforwardly false. I think you, well, I think other, you pointed out to premise like six the, and premise the one. The isn't very clear. Like, what, so, what do you? So, what, so which what? which premise? Which premise is plainly? Well, premise six, I've been given three one. versions of premise one. One of them. I'm, yeah, but but really I'm asking Dave though, because Dave is uh, obviously are, understood which premise. Is. Premise one and premise six. Yeah, I mentioned premise six being false as the other one. Yeah, but you don't even know what the fucking premises are, right? Well, I, you don't I know shit. Just, about this argument. Are you talking to me or him? I'm talking to Rashad. You know more than anybody about this fucking Rashad. argument. <laughs> so this is <laughs> this is not my argument, right? This they the, they made the room so you guys could engage him on the argument, right? Sean came up and said, "What's the argument?" These guys decided to have Ilyas present the argument. The guys around all the time. You can go engage with his argument right now. They have a room. Do you so, not? You know what? It's a trash thing. fucking argument. Do, do you not think it's a trash to, fucking argument? Someone want to send it to him so he can see it if he wants to talk about it. I don't want to talk about oh, it. I'm saying on. you, if you, if you're, if you're just now engaging with the argument and you had to well, rewrite it in a way that you understood it, mm -hmm. it's worth trying to, to engage with it honestly if you actually think it's trash no problem you're, you're entitled to that position it's worth and you trying to engage are you defending with it the argument without even it looking is at trash. it i'm not defending the argument i'm not defending the argument you guys have spent the last 30 minutes what, talking what, what, about what could what could be more honest than trying to take someone's argument who doesn't understand logic not and translate it into argument. first order logic I'm not taking any of What could be more honest Sean, than that? I think the funny thing, well, Sean, is that you could have just said from the beginning, I don't know what's going on here, and, and moved on from there. No. You were the one that claimed, where's the argument, and you couldn't engage with it. So I'm leaving you know you what's aside. interesting is, Rick, what's there, probably what the fuck? is there probably is a valid form of the argument, because this probably is a classical argument, um, you know, from Islamic theology or philosophy or whatever that goes back to like the medieval period or something. And those guys were not clowns. Like you might reject the argument, but it's unlikely to just be like trash, right? Oh, there might be some, you know, variation that this is taking inspiration from. Yeah. That is like so coherent should, and- Yeah, we should know, just find like... out where he got the argument from and then just look it up, you know? Yeah, so it would probably be know if there's like a, a name or a person who is known for this sort of argument. I just want to know where the argument goes to God. Like it doesn't. When does God come in? I mean, it's trying to say it's just like it does seem like it's going to be like a PSR type argument anyway. The only the conclusion is yeah, of that course some sort of independent existential proposition. That's the conclusion. 
they, someone might they, they might say something like, "Oh, that's the only that's only the only thing we're trying to show here." But you know, we could argue from that to maybe a godlike being, uh, given other things, or maybe further arguments or something. Yeah, I don't know where he's constructing it from either, but I'm familiar with the dependency argument, uh, and that's that's what it entails that there's something independent. It doesn't it doesn't uh, hinge on the PSR. Well, it has a disguised yeah. it has a disguised PSR though. Well, I don't know about this argument whether it has a disguised PSR, but the argument they were running other you know the F the even seen argument does. I don't I don't I don't know how to understand this. Um, okay, give that, us the content. Give us the dependency argument, Rashad. That doesn't uh, doesn't smuggle in a PSR or some sort of causal principle. Because some of them do something like that. I mean, if you want to smuggle in a causal principle, then you can. But... Yeah, I mean, we have to start from somewhere, right? Are, are we are we questioning the causal principle as well and the laws of logic, or? Um. What is well, I, mean, I would question the certain quote unquote laws of logic. I don't know. Presumably, we, that's not being done here. So, then what are we able to build up from? I, I don't know. What argument do you want to make? We might. <laughs> well, I'm very confused by any contingency or, or, or dependency arguments because, you know, there's this big thing that's put out that everything has to be dependent on something else. And then there's this one thing that, that doesn't. I mean, that's just a just doesn't make sense to me no matter how the argument is put. It doesn't well, seem to be make any sense no matter how the argument is put. Yeah, if they wanna they wanna explain dependence in this logical way, I mean they're gonna quickly run into problems, um, including some of the ones that I pointed out already. And then there's that idea that, you know, secondary, um, what does Darth say? The secondary primary and secondary and well the fact of the matter is everything can be primary to something else and the thing that that thing would be secondary to could be the primary because it's really primary and secondary are relative terms right as to where they are in relation to the thing before and frankly i think they would be better served by trying to make the argument the dependence argument in terms either of causation or grounding or something like that um you know, I don't think the argument's going to work, but at least it can get off the ground where I don't think this. So then if, if, if would we agree that there are dependent things? Of course. Well, the, word, the word dependent is used in so many different sense. ways. So like, you're going to have to specify the relation you have in mind. You mean causally dependent? In the sense okay, that it's an effect of some cause? Start from there. In the sense, if causal dependent means just that it's an effect of something, then yeah, of course, I, I think there are effects. But of course, I have a lot of different, maybe controversial views about how to think of causation. So, but yeah. Um, okay, how many ways are there to think of causation? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, there's some, a lot. It's, look, look at the, the literature on causation. Um, you have like. <laughs> yeah, how much time do we Powers based theories, you have counterfactual theories, you have somewhat deflationary theories, you have um, law-based theories, I mean, you have got all sorts of, and then within each of those, within counterfactual theories, you got um, like dozens of developments of those theories, you got kind of naive versions, you got blah, 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 like I, I could go on, but you have all sorts of different accounts, quote unquote, of causation. Now, whether you think these are different accounts of the notion, or accounts of the phenomena, that's another can I say something about okay, the contingency argument? If I present it this... No, hold on, Elon. Let Richard talk. So if I say uh, we agree there is a dependent thing, and that thing, you know, is only a dependent thing, I'm not describing anything else about it, uh, would that be a sufficient description of reality? Wait, so is that the, the, the that last thing? That's the last thing? Because if it's only a dependent thing, then it has to be the last thing, right? Um, just let Richard talk to one person, because I don't want him dogpiling. All right. Um, presumably saying that there is this dependent thing. Um, you haven't fully described reality, I guess. Um, and why not? It, it's un uh, well, um, 
you haven't described the conversation we're having right now, and that's something happening in reality. So you haven't described all of reality. Yeah, I, I don't mean I don't mean that uh, by just positing a dependent thing. Therefore, I explained all of reality. Well, what I mean is that if if you conceive of a reality that it consists of one dependent thing, would it be sufficient to stop there and accept that there is one dependent? Thing? Oh, if so, this is like counterfactual. If if there were just one thing and that one thing were dependent, um, yeah. I mean, I guess it depends on the, the actual dependence relation you have in mind. If it might if it's consistent, if that dependence relation is reflexive, um, or at least um, you know satisfied by itself with itself. Um, but if the dependence relation you have in mind is not. And then of course it won't be consistent to suppose that there is one thing and it's dependent and it depends on something other than itself because that's going to be entailed by it. If yeah, well, there is, there is nothing else for it to depend on, right? And so that's yeah. why if I were, to, and I think the first part you said uh, it wouldn't make sense because to say that that thing is dependent on something or itself, there's nothing else to depend on. If I say that it depends on itself, then I'm describing an independent thing, right? No, I mean, so I took a dependent thing to be something which just satisfies, um, you know, if you think of a, a binary dependence relation um, where a thing is quote unquote dependent, or at least dependent with respect to that relation, if it satisfies, um, if there is something such that that thing is related to it in that way. Right. So it, it but there is nothing on... else that we're in this scenario that we're speaking of. And yet, on well, the, but it, the could, it could satisfy both. It could be, it could constitute both for Lada. It could do what? So it could, um, it could satisfy both. It could be both for Lada in that relation. So you're saying that it, when there's one thing, it depends on itself and therefore it's de a dependent thing that depends on itself. So that's, that's exactly the description of an independent thing. And that's why if I were to pose to you, if there was a reality with just one independent thing, would there be a, I, any problem but with that? But, that? but satisfying the second position of the relation, I just take it to be sufficient for being dependent, right? If, if, there's a, if there's a true statement, this thing depends on, you know, whatever, then that thing is thereby dependent. What else does it mean for it to be dependent? Yeah, so exactly. I think you're. I think you're grasping exactly what I'm saying, which is right. But that's that's still satisfied if it's itself, which it depends on. No, again, if it's a dependent oh. thing, to say that it depends on itself is to simply say that it is independent, right? So an independent oh. thing. If I were to if I were to flip the question now, let, let's throw away the dependent thing. Let's just consider a reality, right, with just one dependent thing. I'm sorry, one independent thing. Is there any problem with that reality? So, well, it depends on what, um, what exactly, because look, if there are any dependency relations that it satisfies with itself, then- No, it, it's it would, just that reality an independent wouldn't be thing. It has no dependency relationship to anything. It's, it is by definition independent. Yeah, well, in order to figure out whether such a scenario is consistent, we'd have to sort of list out what those possible dependence relations are and show that it's possible that there is something which doesn't satisfy any of them with itself or any part of itself. Although you're supposing that it doesn't have parts because there's only one thing. Exactly. So I think just in this part of the conversation, I hope it's clear that to, to consider a reality of just a single independent thing is a feasible reality, whereas oh, to I my reality point was that of just a dependent thing is it, it leaves us without uh, without the the thing that it's dependent on. So you wouldn't consider that that would be a possible. Reality. No, I, in fact, my, maybe you haven't been listening, but I said I contested both of those points, right? So in order to establish the um, possibility of the lone independent thing, we have to first make explicit what these you know, all the dependence relations are. 
okay. and show that it's possible that there's something which satisfies none of them with itself. And if that's the okay. case, then sure, the scenario is possible. And on the other, and on the end of that, though, the because I thing, think you're asking the hypothetical, you're asking the question, but you're also simultaneously answering it. So I move forward with your your own answers to your own questions. So what what are the questions? The that you would, okay, what are that's the questions fiction. that you would present for the independent thing, yeah. such that we can, uh, you know, address any question you have about it? What is? I, I just said it. We'd have to. How do we show that for all the dependence quote unquote relations you have in mind when you say well, that? What dependence relations do I have in mind when I say there is one? Hey, hey, buddy, stop interrupting friction in the middle of the sentence. Uh, Sean, I, I, I can have a reasonable conversation with Friction. Friction, if I'm overstepping you, let me know, and I'll, I'll take a yeah. step back. Sean, I don't need you to moderate uh, in, in, in any way. Thank you. Okay, but Friction, don't uh, I don't mean to overstep you. Your mic is a little low, so I'm going to turn my volume up. But yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm on my phone, so... Uh, I'm trying to let me just say, let me just say, it doesn't sound like you're taking Rashad's uh, presuppositions, you know? Can we just... So Rashad stop, sa stop, says... Stop. I just need, I just want to Yeah, one on one, please. I have a chiming in. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? So, I didn't listen. I let me make the point a little stop bit. Stop chiming in. Yeah, let me make the point a little bit more explicit. When you said, um, you're talking about an independent, okay? And for something to be independent means that it does not depend on anything. Well, By definition, okay. Yeah. yeah, but then there are a lot of, relations that might be dependence relations. And so for something to not depend on anything would entail that for whatever relations you're including there, it's not true um, that it satisfies it with something else such that that thing, you know, call that relation depends on something else. And um, if we want to show that it's possible that there exists something which is independent and that there exists nothing else, um, then we'd have to show that there's possible that there is something such that it doesn't satisfy any of those dependence relations and that nothing else exists. And that's, I mean, not obvious. I mean, it might be possible, it might be feasible to show that. Um, it's gonna depend on what the relations of dependence you have in mind when you say um, dependent there. And just quickly on the other point regarding whether you can have a dependent thing um, Do you mind if we take it one by one? Because I'll be glad to sure. come back to the other Yeah, that's fine. Well. we'll come back to the so, dependent one. After. Yeah, so on the independent one, when you say, what are the relations? So give me an example, like what? which one should we consider so that we can articulate that? Because when I, when we when you simply have a single dependent, independent thing, by definition, it's independent. I'm. Mm -hmm. What relations are you speaking of? Yeah, so the, it's going to depend. It's not my choice of what you're including um, as a dependent relation. So for example, someone might count um, causation, me then, yeah. grounding, so, counterfactual, so. I don't know, like you might have a various a variety of quote unquote dependence. Because if you look, if you look in philosophy, people talk about dependence, really that's a large family uh, vaguely defined of various relations that sometimes go under that label. And you, I don't know exactly what you have in mind in terms of those relations. When you say that something is, you know, doesn't satisfy any dependence relations, quote unquote, such that it would depend on something else, right? So, so if we want to figure out that it's possible that there exists something, um, and only one thing, and that thing isn't dependent, well, what are the relations of dependence? And we can go th through it and see if it's possible. You know, that sort of situation is consistent. But I can't determine whether it's consistent without knowing what the sort of dependence relations you have in mind. Okay, so I have no dependence relations in mind. It's just an independent thing. By definition, it's independent. If you're saying there should be a dependence relationship that we should evaluate, maybe you can propose an example. Well, but then I don't know what you're saying, right? If you just say, um, a thing is independent, and that means what well, it doesn't depend on a thing, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you what a de like that dependence relation is or what the various dependence relations that includes are, then I don't know how to evaluate that. But you, you, you what? could mean, you could mean it, it's dependent. You could take dependent to mean like it's blue. Uh, that seems as much on the table as anything else if you don't tell me what sort of relations you have in mind. So so you think uh, a, a dependent 
something is dependent if I say it's blue? What, what, no, why, why would no, you give no, that example? No, the, the problem is that, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. The problem is that unless you tell me what you mean, what sort of relations you're implying um, when you say that something is independent, i.e. such that it doesn't satisfy any de dependence relation, what are those? <laughs> if you don't tell me what those are, I, I, you could be saying anything, right? You right. just want to say, yeah, I'm just going to say it's not dependent and I'm not going to specify at all what that means. Then that's as good as I could, you could be saying that it's blue <laughs> by its dependent. Okay. So when I said, when I said, let's consider a reality with only a depend, independent thing, independent right. thing. Are you saying that that's you, you're unable to conceive of that because I haven't described enough about it to understand what independent means? Yeah, exactly. So, so one thing I think we agreed on is that a thing is independent um, if and only if it doesn't depend on anything else. Okay. And then, um, no, I, I didn't. Right? So that part, that part, I think you're you're introducing, and I'm trying to make sure I understand it correctly. I'm not saying it's independent. If and only if you can prove that there's nothing that it depends on. Oh, no, no, I'm no. I'm not, I'm not the definition, that. We, might, we might not yeah. be able to prove it. The fact is that it's, you know, that's just what it but means is for it to be. But is that how you that. evaluate independence when you prove that there's no dependency? Because clearly the definition of independence is not an ambiguous definition, right? It is a thing that is independent. I don't have to ask, well, let me see, is it dependent on this thing? There's nothing else. No, there no, is no, no other no. relation that I'm describing here. No, no, no. The, the, oh, no, the it's very ambiguous. The, the concern is not about the relata. The concern is about what exactly the relation you have in mind then is. Because, again, um, the word dependence is um, in reference to a relation or like a family of vaguely defined relations. Independent. Vaguely defined not families. Dependent. I don't want to. Yeah, I think that what Friction is asking, Rishad, is that you define dependence because you're using your words dependence, independence, and I think what's bothering Friction is that you, had, you haven't defined those. So you're defining independence as something which is not dependent, but what is that? I mean, is dependence that, a single that, relation that's or the is definition it a family right? Yeah, what's the definition of dependence? Bro, you can give a better, I mean, that's not to say that it's. Yeah, that might be a better way to put the concern because I because when I'm I come at this and like I'm trying to connect this to how I've heard these terms used before and when people say dependence or dependent or independent conversely there's really a variety of different relations that they might have in mind and my concern is that unless you kind of tell me which relation or relations you have in mind when you say that something is dependent or independent um, I don't really know I can't really evaluate the the, the claim. Does that make sense? Can you can you define dependence, Richard? So what I what I presented here, what I started out with first to say that we agree there are dependent things, right? The microphone has a type of dependency, right? Not that uh, not that it requires the PSR, so that's such that you can explain it, right? But there are uh, dependent things, meaning they are dependent on something like to, to be the, I'm trying to think of how to reduce the, the definition of de I didn't realize dependent was such a uh, ambiguous word that it needs. Um, let's see. Let's go to the definition. Okay. Well, think okay, of all the I kinds of dependent, no, think no, of all I'm, the I'm, kinds I'm, of dependence relations there are, right? Yeah, there's causal I, dependence relations. There's, okay. uh, you know, okay, let's go with causal. Wa wa water is dependent on, uh, the molecules hydrogen and oxide, oxygen being covalent, right? Okay. That's a type of dependency. That's, that's why it's what, what, what it constitutes important to, dis, to disambiguate what you mean by dependent. Like you can't just say like, oh yeah, dependence. Everybody knows what dependence means. Like, yeah, but you want to talk about something specific. Yeah, it seemed like, it seemed like at least in the question to friction that he understood it. Now it seems that he doesn't. That's fine. We can, we can go more specifically. Um, no, so I mean, let's this work with part of the issue the whole time. The, that's the, fair enough. The problem that's is that enough. like the problem is that like um, when we were early talking about this formulation of the argument, their dependence had been defined as a sort of like logical relation. Um, yeah, I'm not even. I, I'm. I, I, I don't. This is the first time I've seen that argument as well. I'm not discussing that argument. Yeah, and I assume you started. weren't using it in the same way. So I, then, <laughs> so then I wonder. It's not clear to me what. Um, 
in order to evaluate these claims, whether you know you can have a loan independent thing or a loan dependent thing, you know, we're gonna have to figure out what these relations are, what sort of properties they satisfy, you know, to show that it's consistent that you have. Um, okay, what's the, what's the most foundational one we can work with? Yeah, is the dependent most different in contingent, one. Richard, or not? What's the difference between dependent and contingent? Yeah, so I think I think contingent contingent entails dependent. Uh, but contingent also comes along with other uh, definitions. So that's why I thought dependent was an obvious one. Um, but we can go with, you know, causal dependence. We can start from there. All right. Uh, sure. So let's, let's, let's go with this then. Let's just go, we we're talking about whether it's possible that you have something causally independent existing alone and it's possible and whether it's possible that you have something causally dependent existing alone. And let's kind of use this as a disambiguation. Maybe you want to talk about some other dependence as well. But if we're doing it this way, plausibly causation is going to be irreflexive. So if something is causally dependent, then there must be something distinct from it that exists on which it causally depends, or at least at some point exists um, in a world in which only one thing ever exists is not going to satisfy that. So you can't have one thing that exists alone and is causally dependent. I would grant that. Um, causally independent. Is it consistent to suppose that there is something? Um, oh, causally independent just means that it's, it's not an effect. It's not caused by anything. Um, is it consistent to suppose that such a thing exists alone in the world? Um, that seems consistent enough to me. Um, I don't think I can derive any contradiction from that. So, um, and, and with that, I guess I'm on board. If that's if that's the relation you want to use. Okay. So, uh, thank you for for clarifying or or at least moving along with that part of the argument. So at least at least we're we're I think we're still in the same place that I articulated before, right? To to argue to to hold that there are only dependent things, as in uh, having causal relationships, and that they uh, exist uh, alone, uh, would not be um, a reasonable position to hold. Did you say on the dependence part that it does it entail a contradiction, or it is just not? Um, it seems like it entails a contradiction well, to say this. Are you talking about ontological dependence? No, okay, well, we're, we're using. Go ahead. Well, normally, causation is not considered a sort of ontological dependence. I mean, I think some people have tried to have argued that, but it's normally considered another sort of dependence relation. So, um, to be clear, all I said is. Did you say we're talking about normally, causal dependence? Yeah, I think this is yeah, this, that's the one we're talking about now. If he wants to talk about another one or another set. Yeah, that's, that's the one we're talking about now. So I'm trying so, to stick with that. I think it's so, normally agreed that causation is irreflexive. Um, maybe someone disagrees with that. I don't know, but I'm fine to grant that here um and um that would be so it would be inconsistent with that to suppose that there is something um which exists alone at a world yet is causally dependent because that would entail the existence of something distinct from it on which it causally depends and except on the side there is nothing distinct from it that could satisfy that and so that would be inconsistent now it's a little bit tricky though because you want to then say, well, um, there's a few things you want to say, but one thing you want to rule out is the possibility that um, all that exists are causally dependent things, um, right? I mean, that doesn't strictly follow by the same reasoning because I can't show that there can't be something else on which it causally depends. Um, can, can so you you'd, repeat that you'd have to rule out the to rule out. Uh, sorry. Can you repeat that last part? Why would you not rule out that there are only things that that, that are causally? Oh, oh, so so there might be some way to rule it out. I'm just I was just pointing out that the same reasoning uh, we applied in the loan case does not rule it out in the um, multiple case. So for example, for example, there's a few a few um scenarios we have to consider one is that there's this like causal regress and two that there's this um 
causal circles. Um, now, ca the causal circles or loops, um, that we'd have to suppose that if we're granting that causation is a reflexive, we'd have to suppose that causation is, is non-transitive. But um, we wouldn't have to suppose that for the regress case. And I'm wondering in either case. So Drip, if I go um, step by step with you, the loop, the, the, the kind of uh, the argument of it's just a, a loop or just a um, mm. uh, interdependency that, that we're ruling out. Yeah, so we'd have to rule out that as well as the regress case. Yeah. We would rule out the regress case as well? No, no, no. In order to show that it's not possible that only causally dependent things exist, we'd have to rule out both of those cases. Perhaps others? Maybe that's it. Okay, right. so... Yeah, that's right. It sounded, it sounded like you said... That do, do you agree or do you also rule out the uh, the the circular dependency? Uh, no, I don't. Um, not a priori, anyway. No, there might be some. There might be some reason to to think that it's false. Um, but uh, I mean, it's, it, we'd have to explore it. I'm not... Yeah. So if you have. If you have just two dependent things that are interdependent, right? Um, so the, the question would then You mean be, to say codependent? If it's just two things. Whatever you really want to put in. That's just Thanks for your contribution. <laughs> so, um, so if you have those two things um, and you, you wouldn't rule, would you rule it out because there is no way to... Um, to construct some sort of uh, initial relationship between the two, or would you rule it out because that the actual uh, the actual thing that they are dependent on is the other thing? And I think uh, I, I'm trying to think about how to construct this because if you had these two things individually, um, then you would rule out that there could be two uh, dependent things without a dependence on each other. Yeah, so um, one way you um, might want to rule that sort of thing out is by supposing that causation is transitive and irreflexive, which we're, we're already granting the latter earlier, because then whether it be a loop of two or a loop of any number, um, you could not have any such loop because um, if the if the loop, if the if causation is transitive, then A depending on B and B depending on A will entail that A depends on A or A is causally dependent on A, whatever. And so, um, but given that the relation of causation is irreflexive, that is that contradicts that. And that's one way you might try to argue that um, you can't have a causal loop. Um, now, I'm not really convinced of the transitivity of causation um and to an extent you know um at the very least i'm not committed to both the transitivity and the irreflexivity because um how we consider um certain kind of especially these kind of weird time travel cases might well whatever um so there might be some other way aside from looking at the the relational, the properties of the relation, like the strictly formal properties of the cause, causation relation, just to show that um, in some sense we can't have um, this causal loop, but I'm not sure what else it's going to be um, or what else it could be. So, was that the line? Were you going to go down some line about let's look at the, the formal properties of the relation and show how it, um, you know, you can't have a loop like this that satisfies a relation like that? Yeah, or can, was it like some other consideration? Well, we can come back to that. I, I think I've heard you say this, and, and I think it's reasonable to say maybe we can think more about it, but it seems to be um, the case that it's uh, it's not a loop. But I, I, that's okay. I can put a pen on that. Usually, uh, I don't I wasn't think... Granting that, but I, I think, okay, I think we don't well, have to I'm actually it. kind of of the view that causal loops are entirely consistent. Like, it's, I think certain time travel um, hypothetical scenarios plausibly involve a sort of loop causal structure, and I don't see anything inconsistent with those, but... Um, okay, so so you brought up the time yeah. travel, so let me go along with this analogy. Sure. Um, if, if, I, if I go back in time 
mm -hmm. and uh, kill my parents. You're saying there's oh. something consistent about that? Well, hang on. I'm not supposing that every, um, you know, causal structure you could describe involving time travel is consistent. <laughs> Obviously, the one in which you kill your parents, assuming that, you know, your parents. You're right. Are Let me put it, like... it should be a more clear analogy um, for it to be a loop. Um, my parents, who were my cause, I would have to be their cause. That's the loop that we're talking about. Um, that could be a loop. Um, so you uh, think that's I a plausible more... loop? That there could be such a scenario where I am the cause of my parents and the parents are a cause of... Yeah. I don't see anything inconsistent with that. It's not like physically plausible or anything like that, but I don't know how we're, you know, presumably that's not how we're evaluating it. Like, okay, but but in, in yeah. considering whether or not it's physically plaus plausible, you don't think that would allow us to... Um, to like, can you like, I'm presenting one idea because you, you're the mm -hmm. one that mentioned time travel. Could you help me think of a scenario? Because uh, I, I thought this was a reasonable uh, causal relationship that we could address, which does sound absurd uh, from a from a reality perspective, that I would then be the cause of my parents and then they would be my cause. But do you have another example that we can consider that shows that it, that it is plausible? Wait a minute. Uh, so when we were talking about quote unquote, whether it's plausible. I, I thought we were just looking at whether it's consistent to suppose that you can have um, a loops of causal dependence. And if we're just looking at consistency like that, and, you know, and, you know, plausibly you want to bring in to the, um, make explicit the certain assumptions about the relation and, um, and so on. Um, and if we're just looking at whether that's consistent, then why would, you know, its physical plausibility have any bearing, right? Yeah, I mean, like, at, some, at some point, clearly, this conversation is going to lead back to reality, obviously, right? We started from that place. So even, mm -hmm. for example, if you were to say, is it, uh, is it plausible that, and we agreed that, that an independent uh, thing um, uh, could exist alone? Yes, but in reality, that that's not that's not the reality that we're describing right we, we clearly are acknowledging that there are dependent things so i'm not saying that that's true just because it's pl uh, just because it's i guess um uh logically coherent right um i mean yeah lo logical coherence is presumably a low bar yeah, bro right, like kyle means, reese yeah. and john connor fucking John Connor would have never been born if he didn't send Kyle Reese back in time to fuck his mother, dude. <laughs> Shit. Right, right, right. There's a perfect example. Okay, what's the example? I recently started watching this, this show called Dark, which kind of plays around with some of these ideas, which is kind of cool. But, um, Dark? Yeah. Oh, I heard that was good, the Norwegian. It's it's good. It's it's got, But the, the point is that, like, oh, uh, yeah. Actually, there's, I think in physics, there's some evidence for there being this sort of, um, I don't know if it generates loops, but uh, some, some you should think about sort of backwards causation. What is it? I don't know if it's, it's not quantum eraser, but something else, I forget. I don't know. Um, uh, loopers. Anyway, I don't, so, so I, I don't know whether. If, if yeah. I could explore with you just quickly, at least on the side of only dependent things, right? We have mm -hmm. what we're saying, the possibilities are circular dependence uh, or infinite regress. When you take circular dependence and, and, and look back into reality, uh, do you think reality conforms or could conform in some way to a circular dependence? As in, I'm guessing you're thinking of universes kind of uh, cyclically. Um, so, there's, a, there's a question, maybe put the question like this. Is the kind of global- Well, now we're explicitly talking about fucking metaphysics, right? Is it plausible that the like global causal structure involves like, is it is it circular, um, something like that? Is that the sort of idea? Yeah. Or that at the very least there's no, there's nothing in the global causal structure such that that thing wasn't caused. Um. I mean, without wanting to get into some of my, uh, you know ideas specifically about causation. I would agree. I don't think that's very plausible. Um, I, I, I think there are things all the time which aren't caused, but um, 
So then I think it's possible that more likely true that there are a variety of things which are across. And actually, I think there's a variety of things for which this kind of well. And by the way, no like, fact of the matter, I'm not, like, specified I'm not going to pin you to something yeah. here, right? So I appreciate your your sure. openness to discuss it. So so circular dependence. Um, would you grant that it's it's less likely than infinite regress dependence, or that we don't know yet, or we oh. can just because we can move on to the other points as well. Uh, less likely than infinite regress. Um, or would I think you I would say it's less likely. infinite regress dependence that, that there's an infinite regressive dependent thing? Um, it seems to me a coherent option. Now, um, a low bar, right? So that that we're working with all the things that we hear. That's a low bar. I don't. We're not, I don't yeah, know we're not presenting it. anything that's incoherent here. Yeah, the thing is, um, I kind of want to keep this surface level without getting having to talk about causation more specifically and like what what that relation consists in. Okay. Um, because that's a, a long conversation on its own, especially given some of my views on the matter. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I'll just say that I find the regress m more plausible than uh, this circular um, kind of global structure. But um, um, it seems like it's not. It's not just that it's logically possible. I think it's somewhat plausible. Um, I guess I would maybe lean more toward uh, there being all sorts of quote unquote uncaused events and maybe there's the things only go back so far. I think that's pretty plausible, but I don't know. Seems so like a lot of things thing. are on the table. So there's a third possibility, which is things only go so far back. Yeah, there's the sort of um, and, and by really so far back numbers of causal dependent things. Reality. Dependent things only go so far back to a first dependent thing. No, um, I would, it's not exactly. Um, so we're getting glossing over some things. I'm yeah. just saying that there are, it's, it's plausible that there are in the quote unquote causal reality, um, every causal chain. Um, has some earliest member and that there might be a great many of like distinct causal chains that have first members and they might be connected or disconnected in various ways. Yeah. So but that doesn't necessarily entail that they all come back to one thing. That's like that. Okay. But, that's fair enough. So in, in my view, I'm trying the strategy that I'm trying to employ is, you know, starting out, you know, working forward. And I think we did that. We have a dependent thing uh, that didn't seem like a, a plausible starting point. We have independent thing that seems like a plausible starting point. But now we're starting to work back. We're saying we, we are here at dependent things. And what are the reasonable places to work back on the other side of the coin of, of a of a independent thing being the start of all this this chain of dependent things? Is there any objection to that? Oh, on whether what there could be a single and so I, I kind of want to just go over some of the things you said there because yeah, like, let me let me narrow it down to with, just but... one thing, right? Let me narrow it down to one thing. If I were to describe the scenario of the independent thing. Right. So we agree just being something which isn't itself caused, right? We're just talking about causation. That's exactly right. right. And and if I were to uh, examine because I'm not in neither of the cases am I examining forward, right? So I'm saying we started from the place of where things could be at the beginning and we we agreed that there could not just be a dependent thing alone. I didn't agree to that. Beginning. Oh, for causal dependence, I agree to that. Yeah. Causal dependence, yeah. There could not be yeah. only a thing that is causally dependent alone. We said that if there could be a thing that is causally independent alone. So I'm also trying thinking of working back now. So we're talking about the dependency, the causal dependency that we're that we're discussing. So we have the possibility of circular dependence. We have the possibility, logical possibilities of infinite regress. And mm -hmm. you're also saying that there, because I think there's two other possibilities here. Um, one, which I thought you said, which is uh, causal dependency all the way back to some initial uh, causal dependent thing. Maybe you didn't say that, but is that something you're proposing? The other thing that I think fits into this category is causal dependence back to something independent. 
Um, no, well, the other options are going to be that because um, there are a lot of different possible structures, quote unquote, of causal reality, and there are a lot, a great number of those that aren't our infinite regress or loop, right? So you could have, for example, um, a billion sort of uh, causal chains, each of which has some first member, <laughs> right? Um, and so it doesn't make, it's not right to say in that. Okay. On that model that causal reality uh, begins with one independent thing because. Right, right. But, but, it's but, we're, <laughs> but just to simplify it, right? Because in any of these cases, you could say there's a billion causal chains. Uh, so then we could say in a billion causal chains, if there are, are, are all circularly dependent, we could evaluate them as, so we're just trying to simplify it for, for the sake oh, of the yeah, but I'm, I'm supposing that none of, look, I, there I was looking at models where we don't have circular dependence and we don't have an infinite regress of dependence. But even then, right, there's a variety of different models on which um, all causal chains have some um, first member or members, and yet you're not saying that we have some first independent thing, implicit. So, so when you say they could have first members, would those members be dependent things or independent things? By definition, they'd be independent because they're okay. being caused. So, it, so we're adding to this possibility of looking back at dependent things, the the scenario of either a a series of dependent chains going back to a a series of independent things, or a, a series of independent chains all independently all, all I don't want to use independent there, but all separately going back to an independent thing. Um, uh, and I think another would be that but the branching of these dependent things back to an individual thing that I think we would have to examine whether it goes back to a single thing or it goes back. I'm, I'm, at this point, it seems like they're both logically possible. Low bar again. Yeah, so both, both that there is sort of in causal reality that there is one causally independent thing, one thing which isn't caused and sort of... Um, leads to the rest of causal reality where everything else is caused either by it directly or by something else. And the other possibility is that causal reality extends backward to um, multiple and perhaps many um, causally independent things. And there's a variety of different ways in which the sort of structure of causal reality might play out. Yeah. So those are two ways in which you could have um, so first, at least one first cause, so to speak. I where first there just means now. with respect to a particular chain. Sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah, so, so we had this, I mean, you could carve it up a few different ways, but I was just saying there's four basic structures there. One on which there's at least one causal regress, one on which, you know, there's at least one causal loop, and one on which there's this branching causal structure from an initially uncaused thing, and where that structure involves no loops or regresses. And another sort of um, class of possible structures on which you don't have a single right independent thing but you neither have a regress nor a loop yeah mm -hmm. is it correct yeah. to say in my mind i'm thinking any version of these uh multiple you know dependency chains would just be if if we if we simplify it down like i'm not questioning what reality is i'm saying mm -hmm. if we boil it down to just what we're evaluating i see three things there the circular dependency the infinite regress or the single independent thing? Well, no. The, the... But have iterations of that, right? We could have multiple circular dependency chains. We could have multiple infinite regress chains. We could have multiple chains of uh, dependent things that go back to an independent thing. Um, well, that could go back to distinct independent things. I mean, it's a little right. bit complicated. Distinct because independent these, things, yeah. 
these um, in the multiple chains version, you know, there might be this sort of web of causation where the, you know, at some end, so to speak, um, in the um, causally antecedent direction, you have a variety of things which are uncaused, and this leads into this complex web of causal you know, networks and so on. But um, yeah, that, that's yeah, why that's, I'm trying to trying to yeah. simplify it for the sake of the conversation. Granted, there, 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 in reality, of course, where there are multiple, you know, causal, uh, there could be, you know, webs of causal relationships, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, that web it could be a web that uh, I don't know if the web would lead to a cyclical relationship. That that would be an interesting. Thing yeah. So I was I was supposing that if we're talking about a, you know, if we're looking at the models in which there's no loops, causal loops, or regresses, then you could either have a web which traces back to a single uncaused thing, or there could be um, at various points just multiple uncaused things that uh, okay. sort of generate or lead to cause like the rest of the web. Yeah, fair enough. So then we can leave them as four things. Do you see the infinite regress as a as a as two scenarios, one with a single dependency dependency chain of, of, of an infinite regress or multiple dependency chains of infinite regress. So again, yeah, you can you can divide it up as you want. Um, I I was thinking that yeah, the the regress one, we're just supposing there's at least one beginningless or at least one chain of causal dependence for which there's no first member in that chain. Um, whether there's many or only one, we could consider that. Or if you want to separate those into two categories for the sake of discussion, that, that the way is fine. Well, I, I'm 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 trying to, for the sake of discussion, simplify it to one category because I think yeah, if you could to. if you could rule out if you could rule out one circular dependency, then it rules out ten circular dependencies. If you could rule out one infinite regress, it rules out multiple infinite regresses. Well, if yes. Could... If 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 a loop of if a causal loop is impossible, that any model in which there's at least one causal loop, that's going to be ruled out. And that recording would rule out, you know, as many causal loops as you want. So so the the causal And same loop, with the regress one, yeah. So it seems like we the verdict is still out on the causal loop. You're not convinced that it is uh it is not um uh, that it is uh, you can clarify again to me uh, from my conception of it, I, I can't see how Although I could grant that there is somehow, I have to think a little bit more about even if it's yeah. a logical possibility, but yeah. it seems like it's, it doesn't seem like it would uphold to a metaphysical possibility. Well, that's, that that's unclear because I'm not exactly how we're including metaphysical possibility. I just want to be, I just want to make some one quick point because I actually don't want to stick around too long because I just want to record this video. I want to make one quick point on um, how we're sort of making these distinctions. Strictly speaking, as we've set it up, the independent thing, um, the, the models on which there is at least one thing which is causally independent are, cons um, um, you could have both a model in which there are loops and causally independent things, but um, um, I guess we could leave those. You know, you still rule out those sorts of models if you could rule out loops, so you don't really have to think about that either, I guess. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I wasn't following it, but uh, I guess um, it sounded sound like you were saying it could be a loop, but then have a beginning. Which no, no, no. The, you could imagine these like larger causal structures in which, you know, at least somewhere in the causal structure, there's this causal loop, but also elsewhere in the causal structure, there are um, causes which are themselves not caused. Um, like you could have that sort of model, and but you could rule out that sort of model if you. If you will, the causal loops, but I just want to point out that you know people might have thought from the way that we were setting up setting up the distinctions that these these categories were mutually exclusive. But strictly speaking, it's possible to have a model in which both there's a causal loop and a uncaused thing. Bro, like fucking John Connor and Kyle Reese. It's not like he created the universe or whatever, right? But listen. Yeah, that's right. But John Connor depends on Kyle Reese because look, if, look <laughs> if Kyle Reese didn't fuck John, Con guys, stick with me, right? 
I don't even know what you're talking Reese, about. By the way. If Kyle Reese didn't fuck John Who's Connor's Kyle mom, Reese? then John Connor would have never existed. Are Bro, these names for the people in Back to the Future or something? But Black listen, the Terminator, you fucking zoomer. But listen. So, so but the if, reason why that's but not if, a circular no, but if, listen, listen, that's not a circular but, but listen, but that. listen, but if, if, uh, John Connor, look, never sent Kyle Reese back, then he could have never fucked his mom, then he could have never existed. <laughs> yeah, so that's problematic, right? That's a circular dependency. The same as saying, my parents caused me and I, I caused my parents. <laughs> what's problematic? Yeah, I don't see what's problematic about that, actually. Like... So it's it's not problematic that my parents caused me and I went in back in time and caused my parents. Yeah. No, why would it be? So. <laughs> it would okay. be the cause of your own existence. Amazing, right? Exactly. And, and well, see how. Like, so to consider it for a second, okay? So my parents, right, um, we are defining their and this is why I think as I'm thinking about it, even if you apply it in, in a logical sense, it seems to let, let me think through if there's actually it seems like there's a logical contradiction. So my parents are dependent on me. Right. But I don't exist. Well, you did exist. Right. <laughs> well, but their dependency the on me is for, they, they can only cause me once I've caused them. They can only cause you once you cause them. Yeah, you, you did cause them. And then they're able to cause. They them. didn't. They haven't caused me yet for me to cause them. Well, no, no, because you later went back in time to cause them. No, they didn't cause you. You caused them. Okay, if I caused no, them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that that's I think what where where it, it seems. Uh, let, let me. I'll think of how to formulate what the contradiction is. But to say so, the reason why I start with my parents is because it's just a circular that, dependence relation. Man, it's just, yeah. that's exactly what I'm describing. Is yeah, but that's it, not a problem. Clearly. Man. Okay, so if that if that doesn't sound problematic, then uh, then I'm I'm not sure really what we're talking about. My parents must have caused me, right? That's and right. yet I have I don't exist yet to go back in time to cause them. No, no, and yet, of course and yet, you, and the yet they don't which... exist yet. And yet they don't exist yet because I haven't gone back in time and caused them. And yet I don't exist yet because they haven't. I haven't gone back in time to cause them for them to cause me. Wait, wait, wait. But you can, um, you exist there at that earlier time, right? Because you later. I couldn't have because I haven't gone time. back yet to cause them. No, well, you will later go backwards in time <laughs> so that you exist at that earlier time. I, I don't yet because I haven't gone back yet to cause them. Haven't you read The Time anyway. Traveler's Wife? When you go back, the point in time at which you go back in time, right? Well, okay. presumably the point in time is when you like build your time machine or whatever, and you would right at that point in time. Things. At that point in time, they don't even exist, and I don't exist because I didn't go back yet to cause them. Hey guys, can I mention no, no, no. one they, thing? They existed the whole time because has, has everybody here time. heard of? Uh, Wait, Einstein's hold on. The grandfather paradox. The grandfather paradox. Ooh. It's exactly yeah. this, what you guys are discussing. Yeah. It's called the grandfather paradox. Well, except that we're not considering a paradoxical scenario. Right, we're right. We're considering Sorry? a consistent structure. No, no, well, the, 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 the way you're for, what you're formulating is the grandfather paradox. Yeah. And exactly. What is, and well, except that that one's a to do some bicausal speaking. thing. No, no, but the point, the problem with the, uh, a sensible problem with the grandfather paradox is that um, yeah. When you're considering the whether you can shot, kill your own grandfather. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so it's the same. It's We're the not, same exact problem. Is it? Yeah. The, no. If, but if, if the idea, idea, yeah. the no, no, it's when different. It's different. But it's not time. though, because the, the situation we're no, no, look, considering look. is supposed to be consistent with the past. Backwards time and travel does more. that does not create a grandfather paradox. It creates a causal loop. Exactly. Uh, unless right. you're presuming um, like some type of multiverse or something where no. I don't I, or I don't even know what it would take. Assuming we live in a, you know, a causal, you know, a universe of cause and effect and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is this is one special relativity 101. 
David, Aaron holy Paul's shit. Detroit. This doesn't, this doesn't sound like a 101. Detroit. You, it's it's this level. simple. It, 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 it is. It can, it can be simplified. Like, this, uh, can be I simplified just want to this. say that travel into the past is physically... It has to do with travel to the past. Prohibitive because of entropy. At least it's logically impossible Bro, unless you're talking about some... Bro, Detroit. That sounds like a so it's not logically it, it, impossible. I don't no, know. It's, it, it is. Let me show. Let me, it's really easy to show. Can I? Can I just uh, intervene here? In physics, uh, uh, Hawking said uh, it's it's impossible to travel into the past because of entropy. There is no way you can travel into the past. That's, but that's yeah, just yeah. like well, that could be the one reason person. for it. So what? But the grandfather. Sorry. Paradox, well, what was the objection? Understand it. <laughs> what he was the objection? Hawking is one person. So what? Well, let's move Detroyer. on. Ho- Hawking is one person. Hawking. Yeah, that, that that's funny. not his. That's not Hawking's opinion. That is. That's entropy's opinion. That is physics. It's. It's. It's, it's, physics. it's not his yeah, personal yeah. opinion. But the grandfather paradox could just be formulated. Lo- how it's. Lo- Completely, uh, it's not. Uh, it cannot be logical. It is no, but the, yes, the grandfather. Sp- the it grandfather has to do with time travel to the past. You can travel time, and you can't. Yeah, yeah. If you can travel into the past. No, uh, but, 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 but that's that, that's the problem with trying can't. to apply philosophy to physics. Oh. Uh, yeah, you can't apply a rationalist way. or um, idealist philosophy to no physics. Where no one is doing that. No one is doing that. Chill out, dude. Chill out. No one's doing that. Well, I'm just well, addressing. Somebody, somebody was just proposing it. I'm responding to that. No, no, look, time travel to yeah. the past is like theoretically possible. If it's theoretically possible, it's logically possible, right? The, no, I'm sorry, that is, in that, is incor- that is incorrect. That, that, that is incorrect. That is incorrect. Yeah, that's 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 permit traveling faster than the speed of light. It is not I mean, logically chill. possible. Just chill. It is not logically possible. Yo. Yo. Because it well, takes time it would require... to travel back in time. It would require so, traveling so like you back know, in time. Like, First of all, it would require yeah, it would require traveling faster. Than, I mean, faster than light. No, no, no. It takes time to travel faster than the speed of light. It does take time but, to no. do that. How do you reverse wait, 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 time? So uh, sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Travel uh, faster. Uh, than uh, Can you boot that Haney guy? You won't stop. Let's not get lost from the point. So. CM is articulating the logical problem, and I'd like to articulate it as well because yeah, now it's, it's, going it's over this it. simple. It is presenting it, a logical problem. All right, let's if go you go back in time, however you do it, if you go back in time and kill your grandfather, that at, if you if you if you posit a universe or a world line that is only is one and only one, you're not invoking any multiverse, any other parallel universes, none of that. There's only one and only one universe. Then, if you went back in time and killed your grandfather, then of course, whatever, thirty or forty years later, it's a, you would have never been born. So that the that brings up the issue of well, then who who went back in time and killed your grandfather? Yeah, this, this it couldn't be you because you were never born. Yeah, this is so it couldn't be you. Of, of course, That's when fine. you go back in time, supposing that, that back simple. in time travel is possible, what you do in the past has to be consistent with the way the past was, right? It that becomes. I mean, yeah, yeah. Becomes some people, time. some people say that. that people say, oh, some people right. do posit whatever that. Oh, you, you, if you maybe you can travel back, you know, back in time, you just can't change mm-hmm. it. So that, that so that, so that oh, they're trying to get bro, around this. Oh, no, it has to be you acted in the past may be important to the sort of events that occurred, right? but it's not. It's not going to change the way. It, like the, the past is a certain way, but you know, in the same way as the future. Is yeah. Right? Well, I'm and saying that's why I is, think that's why CM if you allow that, that, the way you're, we're looking at you're this allowing CM. for the grandfather paradox. No, no. And you don't run into the grandfather paradox if you don't suppose that you can, in fact, do something inconsistent with the way the past was. Yeah, but the so friction. So that's exactly the the, the circular dependency. The circular dependency is arguing Mm -hmm. that before, right? I existed. Mm -hmm. I I before I existed, which is at the point uh, of uh, my parents causing me to exist. No, that's not the earliest moment of when you existed, though. That's not okay. When is the earliest moment? It does not matter. If you travel back in time, the time you travel back to is when you were conceived, whether the first that I, moment you had a heart right, the time you traveled See, back. Dude, dude, bro. please stop talking over each other. Holy shit. Yeah, you, you existed before, before you were born. 1985 to 1955, and you ask, okay, when was the first moment at which that person existed? 1955, right? Even if they were born in 1985 or whatever, 1980, whatever. Okay. 
the first moment in which they exist seems to be 1955. Okay, so so let's say, <laughs> so e again, the first point that I, that I existed was a point in, before my parents caused me. Correct. Yeah, what you're Correct. Correct. Caused your birth, yeah. Right, and how is that logically so then, possible? Exactly. Well, there's no inconsistency. So I don't know why it would be logically impossible. How? Well, what do you mean there's no inconsistency? The is inconsistency it? is so is blinding, like. No, it just means that you exist before you were born. There's nothing inconsistent about. That. So again, that, well, well, then, that statement I mean, right there. Unless you're playing minute, word wait, games, wait, that's, you're that's not talking about reality. Right that's the, the statement right there. Let's get that clear. It's that, not a contradiction. It's not a contradiction. So saying it's a logical said, contradiction. I just keep saying it's blinding. I don't like why. Where is the contradiction? It totally is. Let me you exist oh, dude, before dude. you exist? Yeah, exactly. They're no, playing word no, games. You don't kind of look, look, they're playing no, word games. Kind of no, you don't exist before you exist. You exist before you were born. Existing before you were born is not the same thing. The same thing. It's Thank not. It's, really no, it's yeah, not the same thing. And, and that's what the logic. Not the same thing. This is yes, exactly why not time travel thing. is impossible. They're not no, the same bro, thing. No, bro. No. Yes, bro. Almost equating them. How are you going to go faster than your own birth? How? Even if you exceed the speed of light. How are you going to go faster, faster than, than your own birth? Than your own. The own epoch of your existence. Yeah, but, but no, one second, you, gonna... you guys are you guys are looking is at something. It, what the hell is he smoking? Well, one second, you guys smoking? are looking at something slightly different. But Whatever friction, it is, I don't want. I don't friction, know. I, I do. Pass that. I just wanted to yeah, land dude, on this it's, point it's with pleasant. you, friction, because you said you have to leave also, and I have to leave. Yeah. So friction, to me, the circular dependency entails yeah, a logical contradiction, such that such that one, such that a, such that a, which is the cause of b, ayahuasca. And B would have have to been the cause of A. So A existed before it was caused. So it existed before it existed. Yeah, That's the logical and, contradiction. And to me, basically, the no. phrase error of time. Why would, and we're to, and we're you don't have to. Hey, 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 shh, 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 let friction, time. let friction fucking respond to that. Shut, shut up, that please. That in itself is not, like, you're, you're, presup you're adding in this, like, unstated assumption about um, the relation between the causal and temporal order, right, which is that um you're assuming that one that if two things are causing each other or that a is causing b they must exist at distinct points in time right the cause is preceding its effect in time and b that you know you cannot have backward causation but actually a lot of people would disagree with both of those assumptions um you think you can have simultaneous causation yeah but anybody you know, serious stop cm dude dude anybody serious yeah Actually, I think, and I think, I think earlier in this conversation, when we when we took the position of of uh, of um, dependency uh, mm -hmm. by causation, right? Right. So I think that entails that Done for deal. A to have caused B, mm -hmm. and B to have not existed until A caused it, right. and yet that it existed before A caused it. That, that that's a logical contradiction. Exactly. No, but you're supposing that for B to cause A, it must exist before A caused it. Okay, so and, okay, and that's just a rule about backward causation or okay, simultaneous so causation. Well, we are ruling Stop. out backward causation. Dude, well, hey. so are you saying so? One I mean, second. there's a lot of ma mainstream physicists today that wouldn't rule it out. Well, in fact, there's, there's good armies so, to rule it in. May, oh, may I may I just I suggest know. may I just suggest something that we know in in quantum mechanics. Uh -huh. That oh, bro, no, 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 you may not. No. I'm okay, it's cool. the most basic stuff of special relativity here. Okay, wait. Yeah. wait, wait Only wait. my magic can be suggested. What? Well, look, I'm talking look, about, we're talking about theoretical Wait, so. wait, wait. But we're talking about theoretical possibility, right? Right. So, are you can are you familiar, CM, with uh, the Novikov self consistency principle? No, uh, I don't think, I don't think with, that's, familiar... that's what we're discussing. Actually, exactly. I think no, that's, familiar... that's yeah. related. You wanted yeah. to know how others. it was possible. Sean, Sean one second. Right? You're the one that presented this Terminator. No, Novikov intended it to solve the problem of paradoxes so in time travel. The time travel, one second. The time travel uh, issue here is about really? the What's circular your... dependency issue. What's it called? Right? What was it called? Novikov self-consistency. So conservation of history and stuff. It's Michael J. Fox self-consistency issue. 
Oh, you're gonna have to. You're fixing you your mic as well, so it's hard to hear you. So I think, I think, I think. Just, just type into Google Novikov self consistency principle. Nova Novikov. N O V I K O V. Novocaine. Novikov. Shut up, Joe. Why the fuck are you trolling? You fucking. Now is he uh, Sean is such purely? A... You're fucking purely trolling. Like, Shut up. Philosophically, <laughs> or is he taking it into account? The you know the laws of nature. 